a true budget because we need your input. But it's a base budget. You have a base budget, um, meaning that it's recurring items, salaries, things that we can't take out. Um, what you're also going to see is actually your um, proposed um, addition to cores, which you have on scene. It's about $30 million. That's not included in your budget. Um, also, um, the salary increases, the initiative for salary, and that was for the regular, the 5% first year for regular employees and another 5 in the next year, and also for public safety. But we have that number set aside so we can see within the, um, the budget. So with that, we'll look at, if we can do the next slide. Oh, I have to click to, oh, right. the process. <laughs> okay. So yeah, and here's um, in detail of what we're going to um, go for. So the first is I know you know that number, that 104. That's what we've been talking about, and per your guidelines and your financial uh, policy, it states that your next year's budget cannot be more than your. Uh, your proposed revenue can only be less than or equal to to the 2021 estimated revenue. And currently we're estimating the revenue for 2021 because we haven't completed our 2021 um, budget year. So and also these are proposed numbers, they're drafts because we haven't received the revenue, the total revenue yet. So we're just anticipating. So right now we're saying that's our number, that 104. You've seen it since um, the mid-year review. That is the number. And so our revenue for 2022, we're proposing that uh, that's our uh, number, 104, for um, 2022 budget. And also we're anticipating perfect would be 104. But your 22 is 103. So we came below the amount, the target number. Okay, so and again, that 103 is base. It's just salary things that you have that you need to run the government. So it's, it's base. So today's our expectation is to take that uh, million for the things that the board's initiative, okay? And so it would be the salaries. Um, it would uh, be some of your initiatives that you're working with that one million. But also, your fund balance is in, um, you're in perfect shape with your fund balance. Last year, the goal or the purpose was actually looking at history and where you're going. And that's when um, the financial policy was um, adopted. You guys made changes. And also the mortgage rate was increased. And because of that, you're in a great financial position. And now you can move forward with initiatives. Before you couldn't, but now you're going to have a fund balance that you can and actually, if you um, follow your policy, you can set aside for capital. So that 30 million, it's possible that you can um, fund about 15 million of it, but it will be coming from your fund balance. Okay, because you, you notice that on the, the other this slide, we only have a million. Right. Right? Right. right. So if you if you add anything, if you add uh, two million, one million is gone. You then you have a million you're gonna have to fund somehow. Okay. Okay. So your general fund recurring revenue. So you've heard about recurring revenue. Your recurring revenue or revenue that we know we're going to receive. And again, you see the 104. That's our 104. And um, coming up with that number, we're assuming that we're going to stay the same. So that means no military increase. 
it's, it's staying the same, and those are our assumptions. That we're taking a 33% uh, collection, no new growth, no assessments. So that one of the four for the tw um, 2022 budget, the millage, no millage increase. That's what's being, that's the data that we're showing you right now, no millage increase, 104. Okay, so these are your recurring expenditures. And again, as I mentioned, these are um, your salaries and um, the um, county administrator, um, has some assumptions and highlights to um, one is the increase so there's um, some increase because there is election year and look back it's more expenditure and also um, beautification in this 103 there's about I believe 1.1 million dollars for um, uh, public uh, works for six mowing um, cycles and beautification and then also you have a full year of your new um, senior um, center and your um, rec center, okay? And last year you didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And then again, um, there's no additions, there's no capital in this number or no additional heads. But in that 30 million, you'll see that there are additional um, staff requests. And also you'll see that there's capital and out of um, your expenditure, again, your 2022 budget, public safety is a priority. That's 36%, public safety is 36% of your budget. Okay, the next is um, recurring, it's just the 103 again, but it's actually um, in categories. So you can see out of that 103, you see that uh, salary, um, your human capital is 59% of your um, expenditures when you're putting it in the categories. 59% is salary. Okay, this is the uh, general um, fund revenue. And again, um, your proposed um, 2022 budget is 104, but we added the ARA. Oh, is this a, does this have like, like a, I promise I won't point it at it, like the laser. The laser. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a laser. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. Um, I was trying to be fancy. So, <laughs> um, in, the, in your proposed 22 um, budget, you see the 104 for revenue. But down at the bottom, it, the expenditure is 108. And I uh, mentioned, you know, before your expenditure was 103. And um, I also mentioned that we would, well, I'm sorry, I keep walking from the thing. But that 3.8 million, we would have a ARPA transfer in to fund for the um, salary initiative. And that number is coming from your ARPA budget that was approved, and it was for the regular employees. Um, and this is, we're looking at the first year, so regular employees, 5%, and your public safety, 10%. And public safety, since we're talking about general fund, we're um, speaking of the coroner and um, the sheriff's office, because in the other funds where we'll um, see later, that's where you'll see your fire because you remember fire has its own um, fund. So it's not part of the general fund, okay? Sorry. But, but, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so if we use the ARPA and our general fund revenue transfer and that's something that's over the Yes, it, it would. And for this year, if, if you're only looking at one year, but you should look, because a budget strategically, you should look past that, you know? So the first year, yes, but you have funding for it, because it's ARPA. 
And you have two years funding for it because in your ARPA it's for um, year 22 and 23. But 24, you're going to have to fund that. Right. Okay, so in anticipation of that, what should we be doing to And I guess that's where most of the program comes in. He said he was going to comment. He said, yes. David said he was going to be quiet and comment. Oh, he's going <laughs> to throw me in. So, <clears throat> because. Because this is a um, concern of your chief financial advisor. It's not a concern, but he continues to point that out. He's looking further. He's looking at 2024. He's asked the same question. Well, I'm looking at 2024 too, but I'm talking about <laughs> Because so you're going to have to raise the either you're going to have to um, raise mill, the millage rate at probably point three nine to um, to cover that, or you're going to have to um, cut um, cut operating expenses. Yeah. So, that, so that so that's why I have on here question marks about operating. Do you really need to? Because what if we have no new growth? Because she just stated in your zero growth. <laughs> so, because we would love to anticipate that, but with inflation going up and everything around that, that just, that would be conservative. And then we'd be going over our policy. That is correct. And you would have to stay, because you would be violating your policy. So, you would have to state that, that you're going to you know, either amend the policy or. I'm not sure of the, how you want David. You can. I don't want to say David you can speak now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to reserve it to you. To to okay. Okay. But okay. Um, 
the government and by departments. However, you see in this um, fourth column proposed taxes, and that's uh, the proposed addition to core, and that's the 30 million. And our expectation is um, we start looking at that list, I pull up the Excel spreadsheet, and I can start um, popping the numbers in um, based off of um, the board's you know, request and their initiatives. But again, um, to your point, Commissioner um, Carlton, yes, you're going to be adding, you know, we just added the, I just showed a view of that 3.8, but again, it's a base budget, and if you see something on that list, that you know that needs to be done, or you know, um, you know, it's an initiative. It is going to bump up your budget more and eat that million, and then that's when we're going to have to look at you know your fund balance because that's where um, it's going. To, that's where we're going to um, get the money is from. And again, this is the list. function of your government. So then um, we're, this is just a snap view of um, the, your fund balance. So your unassigned um, fund balance. And so that number is higher. So, but you know, if you look at the, your total fund balance, it is higher. But again, remember, there, it's restricted. You know, there's numbers that are restricted. So that's how we come with the unassigned. And unassigned means that you can use it for the operations of the government. It's not restricted. However, um, we anticipate um, um, your fund balance, I believe it's um, in the 40, in the 40 million. However, there's, um, it is restricted. You have outstanding, you have about $10 million in POs, purchase orders, that hasn't hit the expense, but we know it's an obligation. We send a PO to the vendor, so we know we're gonna have to um, pay it, but it's not in the number. So therefore, we restrict the number, and that's how we get the 28 million. We state that that 28 million is unassigned, and that's what you can use um, for the operation of the um, government, and if you go over that one million, it's going to come from this 28. Um, well, the 29, because we're anticipating that the um, your revenue that one million, so it's the 29. But then you have to look at your um, financial policy, where you do have to set aside the 12 million. That's your um, Minimum. That's where you can um, drop. That's the minimum of where you can um, drop your fund balance without um, making um, strict cuts. So you have to um, um, your 12 percent, and then also the 25 percent. You can put 25 percent away for um, capital too. And if you recall, we did that last year, and it was about three million dollars and. Um, the board um, created initiatives for that money. And you can do that again um, this year. Again, you're in good um, a financial position because of the decisions that you made you know, in the past, the prior year. So you're in a good, good position. You have options. But of course, um, you do have to you know, consider the future. And not just look at it, um, you know, this one year. Is this uh, taking into consideration the departments that are on the budget, and will probably be turning more money into us? That is correct. Yeah. That on trend. Yeah, and that's where um, that's several mil million. Yeah. How many million? Um, Pat on the back. <laughs> yeah, well, currently we are, um, you are 6%, you know, under target, so, yeah. Um, but we'll see, you know, how the year ends and then um, be able to, you know, give you that number. But yes, it'll go into fund balance and it'll either make, um, you know, just that 29, you know, higher. 
So you, it's not in that figure? No, this, no, this figure is um, what we're proposing. So, okay. yeah, you know, this is what we're proposing for 2022. So we're anticipating that we're going to end with um, the 28, the 28 million. But you probably going to be several million to that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a possibility. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We usually don't close the book in March. That is correct. Because that's when everything comes in. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, here is where we're actually, um, we, just the view of that one year. Um, we're stating if your if your expend, um, expenditures stay the same, but as um, you mentioned, we know that 103 is not, you know, if you don't add anything today, then you will have 103, but you have to um, understand that first year. So this is just to highlight that the first year, which will be the 2024, it's going, you're going to have to add $3.8 million. And um, Commissioner um, Guider, the um, third column where it says the estimated of 2021, we're estimating um, <coughs> in revenue over expenditures of $4.2 million. And so that's how we, um, you're beginning and then ending the 40, but you have $12 million that's already been at all obligated. That's a liability. And so that's what makes it to 28 million. And so the next is your proposed addition to core. And I know that you have seen this and as I mentioned, this is the the um, 30 million dollar request. We have it in sections, like your wage adjustments, and that was if um, the department felt that an employee um, needed a, um, either a raise, promotion, or discretionary raise, it would be in that column. And that's $13.6 million of, of salaries. And then you have additional heads, and that's on 2.7. I don't recall how many heads, but um, that is the the 2.7 is the additional um, personnel. And then you have a vehicle which can come under your capital, and you have 4.1 million in a vehicle requests. And equipment, you have 1.5 million, and again, that can come under your capital. Then you have building um, improvements, and that's 4.9. We would have to look at that. Some could um, fall under um, capital, but some may have to be operating. It, um, it depends on the dollar amount and exactly what it is. And then you have technology, and that's 1.6. And I think that is in your budget. Uh, so the um, technology of the 1.6, we already got funding source for that, and the funding source is um, ARPA. And then you have um, other, and so the total is 30.8 million dollars. And we're looking for um, that 30.8 million. Either we, you know, decide on funding sources. And it should be in the 2022 budget. And um, and are we are we going to do that today? Is that what we're so so? Yeah. What I'm hoping for is my understanding is the way you do this is each commissioner kind of says what they want to sponsor, and then we can figure out how we fit that in the budget, whether it's a recurring expense or one-time expense. Um, I, I saw you kind of went through and saw that building improvement number. Um, 3.1 million of that is the sheriff's um, security system, which what we did in the budget is um, 
allocate some funding to tide them over, and we're hoping that will be a SPLOS request. So they were able to give us a temporary solution that would kind of tie them over, um, which was under 100,000, which would give, which would buy us some more time. Um, Rather than I interject a little bit. Oh no, go ahead. So we can speak now. I can speak now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you want me to stand? Yes, please. Um, so one of the things that um, you know, as Ron and I were talking. I've been talking through this. You know, the financial advisor and the finance staff, you know, they have a role. Their role is to be conservative, to keep us in the box, and make sure that we don't run off the rails. And and I you know, I've done some some history and my research, and even as I looked at the 2020 budget, you know, there was a big giant chasm that, you know, when you established the budget that came out of fund balance. You know, you, you yeah, can't run that far. We can't. Right, we can't run like that, right? Mm -hmm. But we've clearly built up our fund balance, and we're not trying to go backward. What we're trying to do is balance. So, you know, what I said to Roz last night is, it's all well and good to have money in your fund balance, but as commissioners, if we can't put the service on the street, nobody's going to care how much money we have in the bank. They want to know that the cops are going to show up when 911 is called, when the fire is, is blazing, they want the firefighters to show up. They want to make sure that services are rendered. And we can't render services without paying people a competitive wage. In this market, we're just going to die on the line. And so as I explained to you when we went through the ARPA list, the, um, the, the premise is we use that funding as a bridge to continue to build. One of the things I've not been able to do is really exact any efficiencies in the organization. Mm -hmm. um, Madam Chair likes to talk about double downing on expenses, which we've done, but right now, what we have to do is figure out how we can be better, cheaper, smarter, faster. And so a big part of what we're asking, and is on the ARPA list, is technology. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things we do is very arcane and requires a lot of human capital. And as you saw, human capital is our single largest expense. And some of the things we do are extremely labor intensive. Um, I'm not saying that you're going to find three and a half million in in um, in efficiencies, but I can I think there's a lot out there that we can do. Right now, we're running six percent under budget. If we can continue to do that by incorporating efficiencies and recognizing there are things we're just not going to be able to hire people to do. We have to figure out how to do things more effectively and more efficiently. We just can't hire an accountant for fifteen dollars an hour. That's just never happening, you know. Or, or an account technician, or accounting technician that sits there all day and folds, you know, checks and puts it in an envelope, and then the little man with the little bag drives around the county and drops off checks. You know, that just doesn't work anymore. So I think there's a combination of things, and I think as the financial experts who are very fiscally conservative will tell you, there is no guarantee that we'll have growth, there is no guarantee we'll have increase, but it's also unlikely that having raised the millage rate, we're going to see a decrease. Everybody anecdotally and commercially and all of the financials have shown the strength in the real estate market. We are traditionally, is it one year or two years behind David? We're about two years behind. We're two years behind. So we're not seeing the effects of the increase in people's base um, property value yet. So if you think about that a year from now, and two years from now, we're going to start to see the impact of the increased value. And you're also making some investments. You're investing in software that's going to allow our tax commissioner, or tax assessor, to be a lot more effective in ensuring that everybody is paying their fair share. Because even just anecdotally, as the new tax assessor has gone down three pages of commercial business, we're under collecting from the commercial market. And you've already committed to, as one of those POs that you committed to, is a reassessment of commercial to make sure they're paying their fair share. So while it is, and I shared, I shared this when we did the ARPA presentation, there is some risk with one-time funding for recurring expense, but I think it's a calculated risk. 
And quite honestly, if there was a way for me to fund it without doing it that way, I would have done it. But we tried every which way. We even looked at the special funds to see if they could pick up. Some of them could pick up their share. But in the unincorporated, there's just not enough money inspired to pick it all up. So we're going to be using this bridge. And it's a, I don't think it's a bridge too far. But it is a risk. You know, and um, the other thing that I think we definitely have to work harder on the SPS to make sure, speaking of fair share, <clears throat> to make sure we also need to look hard at lost, you know, to make sure, you know, there's equity there. Um, but I felt like it was important to interject that just so that there's a level of comfort. The other thing is, um, you know, as, as we continue to find things, increase that fund balance, you also have to determine what, what's a good sweet spot for you? Where are you comfortable with continuing to grow the fund balance? So um, that's sort of my, my interjection, and I'll, I'll turn it over to my co host. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as I was looking at the list, I guess it, it's, it's kind of, it is scary still, but, uh, but I just want to identify general fund. And I don't know, I should have done a total, but. I did not. But these items are okay. These items are general fund. General fund. And then you come with the other funds. And these funds are should fund their own items. So it won't come out of your general fund fund balance. It it will come out of the other funds, if they have enough to fund out. But in whole, Douglas County um, proposed addition to court is 30.8 million. And I'll try to get the total for general fund for you today. I'll add that up. So the review of other funds. So you have four really basic uh, main funds. And you have your general fund that we just went over. Your next is going to be your unincorporated area special district. We're, um, this is the revenue. We're proposing 11.3. Um, that's in line close to your 2021. And I think that we're looking at other permits. We may. Um, recommend bumping that to um, $216,000 under other permits uh, because um, currently we're at 277. So um, we may be in line, that 11.3 may be closer to our estimated 2021. And based off of numbers, actual real date, um, real data coming in. But that is your unincorporated revenue, 11.3. These are the expenditures that go with that 11.3. You have public works, you have planning and community development and general appropriation. That is uh, money coming into, uh, I mean, expenses going out to fund the other um, animal control and um, fire. We anticipate that you're going to uh, end in 2021 with a $2.3 million going into fund balance. So that would um, have your fund balance in at $3.8 million, which that fund balance, uh, fund balance as a percent of expenditure is 42%. That's a healthy fund. This is a healthy fund. Um, we're uh, proposing the expenditure to be 9.4. And again, um, no initiatives, just straight base, what we need to operate um, this unique uh, fund. And we're anticipating, um, if you look at the revenue, was uh, 11 million, 11.3, um, and we're anticipating with the data that we have that the 2022 expenditures will be 9.4 which you will be adding 1.8 million into your uh, fund balance. 
We're anticipating um, that in 2022, your fund balance would jump at 61% of your expenditures, so 5.7 million. And we would look back, I've been told I clicked fast from somebody, but I wanted to go back to the uneven. And so, again, I should have told you, but um, in its fund 270, this is what they're requesting for their um, proposed addition to court. And again, these items are not in that 9.4 uh, million. Okay. 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 Next is fire protection services and EMA, e EMS. Um, for 2022, we're estimating um, $151,161,000 going into the fund balance, which uh, makes your fund balance 937, which is only 6% of your expenditures. Proposed. Um, we're looking at a balance budget. But again, that's only five, you know, it's only 5% um, of your expenditure. So this um, fund, we need to review and make sure that um, our revenues are funding the um, operation of this fund. Go back. Um, click the look. <coughs> and um, fire protection. That's the 272. Mm -hmm. Fire protection. This is oh, it is total. Okay, well, this one is total. But it's um, 4.8 million. So you would definitely, if you wanted everything for fire, you would definitely be going into five hours. That fund will be in the negative. That is correct. Right now, right. But if you look at 2024, right. they're in that you know position. You know that whatever you do, um, I don't know, whatever you whatever you decide for this year for those salaries. You know for 2024, if everything stays the same, you're going to be in the negative. Right. Yeah. Right. But for this year, you're correct. The revenue is, um, we have a funding source um, for two years, for 22, 23, but for 2024, you're going to have to find a revenue source. The next is animal control. We're estimating um, a, de a deficit in um, your animal control. The beginning um, balance is 261. Revenue is um, 1.4. Um, animal control is 1.5 in expenses. So that would be a negative, um, subtracting from your beginning fund balance, and it leaves um, 121 thousand um, dollars estimated for 2021 which is eight percent of your expenditures and then for 2022 again um, we're anticipating going into um, fund balance to fund the operation of animal, animal control which would end um, your fund balance at 66,000 and it's four percent of your expenditures yeah. Right. I, I think um, you need to look at the contract. Yeah, um, no, but, it is, contract. Yeah, but it is. Yeah, it is a contract. But here's what I learned: they have a 20-year contract with us that's separate from our SDS. Right. And we're only we're only about halfway through. And it doesn't have an escalator. 
So as we discuss SDS in the laws, we probably need to reopen some of these. And we need some help, David. <laughs> The other thing so, that I've so, heard. So, I'm hearing you correctly. So, we don't have an increase like in just in time where mm -hmm. the animal control has actually uh, been, been increasing from an expense perspective. So, yeah. I'm telling you that we don't have a, a, a way of actually saying to the cities that that bucket has went from a million to a million three. And that three million, that three back to the thousand that you are now also responsible for your portion. No. I didn't see that. Um, Ron and I both looked. We didn't see that. I'm not really sure how, how that was negotiated. But interestingly enough, we just met fire, and fire is similar. Um, and the fire agreement, I think it's a 10-year agreement, and I think it's also outside of the SDS law. So I'm hearing correctly, it's five or 20-year agreement. This is what you can pay by animal control. Those were those both negotiated before us. Sorry, another question. So, attorney, how do we get out of it? Well, I mean, we have some documents. I don't think that would be the intent of this board to say we created the documents that you would be with that number. 10 or 20 years. Now, it may be perceived as such, and it may be written as such, but I don't think that was the intent of this board when we created the bucket, I don't think you guys when we created the buckets. I think you want I was here. I was no, here because I found the error. Say that. I said I found the error that we were doing. We were giving them some things that we weren't supposed to be giving them because they get their own uh, insurance. Right, right. And then we correct all that and went to the bucket structure. And I know some of these guys are there. Set up the unincorporated. Right, so, so I, don't, I don't think that was the intent, but I think it's something that we definitely need to take a look at because if that's the case, then we got to keep from it. We got to be, we, we create a bucket so it might be uh, created, you know, fair sharing, uh, you know, it, it wasn't created to say, because I remember when I was a city council, we only gave the county uh, a political spread, I think it was a, a, a employee. We didn't pay for that person, and we gave them a truck. Well, it's, it's 10 years I was there. I thought so, it was crazy, but I didn't say anything about, like, oh, you're going to change this structure. Yeah, what I would recommend, and of course we're going to have to depend on legal, is when we get rid of the USPS next year, all these extraneous agreements, if we can get the city to agree, everything should be under the SDS, which is a 10-year plan. And the majority of what we probably do for the city is going to be in fire EMS. Fire EMS. That's a big, big oh, yes. chunk. So you know, that would be our opportunity to to renegotiate, um, and and that's and putting everything on the same cycle with, with escalators and percentages of total budget and things like that. Correct. You know, puts us all in a better position. Correct. Okay. So, did y'all at did y'all look at fees? Are we in line with other cities, um, counties? <laughs> well, one of the fees we have not talked about in here, and, and I guess it's all always coming out. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a new, yeah. Um, landfill, the landfill. Yeah. That's one of those areas yeah. where we are working on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to have more things. Oh, okay. Fees and fire charges. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna take a look. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And animal control, that's what I'm gonna look like that. There's no guy with me. Give me. Um, they're requesting some wage adjustments and other. Do you remember? Yeah, I think it was a contract or something. Um. But they're requesting an additional um, 19,000 of their number. So that 19 would come from the 66, unless you find another funding. Well, I can't. 
technician, a surgical technician, and an animal control officer. Okay. So there are asking for that. Okay. So now we have our special revenue funds, and these are solely restricted. They use, you have to, um, they're totally separated um, from all other funds, and they have actually things that you can purchase out of them. So most are held by the um, constitutional officer, and the one that is at, has activity and um, from the board, and that's that, the hotel motel tax. And you see the fund balance is at 97. Have we not voted out the neighborhood stabilization program? Um, I was thinking the same thing. I know that if anything, we're, we should be doing the closeout documents and not purchasing, but I need to, I'll check on that. It's called Ron Robertson's almost, Ron, Ron Robertson's almost uh, completed. You can just a little bit of money on that. Yeah, 20. So if so, that would have to go back unless, you know, they're, they find an uh, activity for them that falls under the... That 24,000 would go back to the bed. Yes, unless we, you know, find out. So, you know. Well, I'm thinking that I don't want to get money back to Unless we can find an activity that falls under the <laughs> And then these are other funds too, and these are totally restricted. Um, your debt, sir, the capital, um, your SPLOS, that's ongoing. Um, again, it's kind of hard to look at, especially a capital project by a year. It's really, you know, multiple years. But we're anticipating um, $16 million for this year. But of course, it has a funding source, you know, with the um, SPLOS. Dollars and then the debt service for 2020. Oh, that should be 2022. But for your proposed 2022, um, the debt service of 4.1 would be due. And is that the last payment? That is the last payment, yes. And then um, the solid waste, what we were uh, just speaking of. Uh, and we are taking a look at the fees and also um, additional funding sources. I don't know if Sunni can speak on. We have to touch it. Okay. So we're still working on that. And then your internal um, service fund, that is your um, self insured um, health insurance and your workers' comp. Why did workers' comp go down? Usually, um, towards the end, they provide a credit. So we usually budget without the, um, usually we, I need to take a look at it because it's best to budget without the credit because you don't know if you're always going to get the credit. So I think, um, thank you for pointing that out. I'll take a look at it and most likely um, reflect um, last year. The 17th. That is correct. Okay, and then ARPA allocation. You want to go through it again? We can go through it again. Or we should have an interest in going with the ARPA. I think we've already done that. We've already done that. And everything is in your booklet. Yes. Unless you want to speak with something specific. But the only recurring expense in ARPA is the the money that you got in there uh, totally covers strictly if you want to follow all those funds and staff and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Whatever's in there, it, it's the zero itself after that. Yes, correct. What to me? Right. Now, of course, a lot of these are estimates. Why not? Yeah, but based on what we know right now. You know, we, uh, Congress just passed the <coughs> two trillion. Uh, infrastructure, and we've got infrastructure in the ARPA line item for uh, internet. Uh, 
Broadband. Broadband. And so, should we wait with our ARPA funds to see if we're going to get additional funds for that? Yeah, actually, the um, Internet and Broadband, we were um, putting in for these two, and we've applied for a state grant in partnership with at and So if we get that and there's other, um, and there's other funding, even for water and sewer, there's, we also put in a water and sewer grant for trailer parks. If we get that other funding, then we can come back to you and say there's more funding to do, because we didn't get to everything, right? Um, we can come back and you can all consider different things. We're really waiting for the guidance to come down, which will take a while, on the um, infrastructure bill to see how they're going to distribute it and how we're going to deal with those funds. So do we have to spend the money by year end, the half that we're getting this year by year end? No. Well, you have, in order to draw down the second tranche, the first tranche has to be expended. It has to be allocated, right? Or allocated. Or allocated. All funds have to be allocated by the second. 24, then all funds have to be spent by December of 2026. Yeah. So, but even if the federal dollars wants to apply, I don't think we be, we should anticipate it, but we shouldn't be holding up just on that. You know, I think we should keep what we were going and still apply. So, if we, if we get it, then we'll make the adjustment. Yeah, that's what I Right. I wouldn't try to, you know, make the adjustment. Yeah. Right. And, and remember when we discussed this, we said all of it is fluid. We're going to be applying to different grants. Right. Right. So if we get a grant for any one of these categories, we could come back and we could reallocate. Are we looking at what we could spend that money for if we get the grants? <laughs> well, you have, remember the first list was a $40 million list. Right. The first list, which was commissioner request, was $40 million. So we told already. But certainly, if that's, you know, we have that uh, wonderful opportunity, we'll come back to you. The other thing is they're changing the parameters on how you can spend our yes. They're talking about disaster relief, transportation projects. They've opened it up quite a bit. Um, still waiting on the final guidance on that as well. But um, but it's, it's a moving target. They keep changing things. So Sharon, you have plenty of other, other spending that you can use it for. I'm just trying to make sure we understand that. They're, we have a forty million dollars. We have a forty million dollar right. we have eight million dollars. Change it back and we reduce it down to something realistic of what we can do. But I'm saying that it's a commission guy that we there is plenty of uh, projects that we can look at if we get federal or any other uh, grant funding or, or some other source that you got a list that we just fall right back on. It'll be up to this board to decide if we want to take that back. So, and what we would do is come back to you that's with a revision. And quite honestly, we're probably going to have to revise the stuff several times. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. trust me, there's, there's, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of money, but we, we got a lot of projects that we can add to the list. And so this is the budget schedule. So where do we go from here? Um, on November the 30th, we we'll have a public hearing, and the vision is what you decide from here until then um, will be in the public hearings budget that's presented. And then December 14th, so then you have from November the 30th through um, December the 14th to continue to make changes. And then on December 14th, that's the adoption of the budget. And then of course, on January the 1st, we will begin that budget on the calendar year. Quick question. So, are these numbers that you're talking about, are, are they based off of uh, a rollback, a potential rollback, or are they based off of a rollback? No rollback. Which is good. I want to yeah. make sure that, that everybody can hear it. Right. Because I don't want to think that there's a potential <laughs> possibility or a rollback or a week. Right, but you may decide that if you ask that number. And if they decide, and that if they decide, that would be a number that we kind of at least acknowledge, you know. You're absolutely what that right. Is, you, know, so. you heard that. Did I say that? Oh, Yeah, we're looking at 
that if by chance we roll back, then that's going to be accounted for. So that million will get washed out with ease, and uh, you will see the numbers, the difference now. That doesn't mean that we will have new growth. That doesn't mean that we will get something from the board of assessment, which I think we will. Um, but, but at the end of the day, we know we can account for we can account for the rollback and not having it. That is correct. So, okay. Oh, health care costs. So, what was health care? I guess the health care costs that's associated with this, this particular budget, like we anticipated, because that, that's normally a number that always tend to surprise us and, and it looks really healthy when we really address it. But I've seen it as much as three, three, $3 million or so, depending upon kind of what we've done throughout the year. So, are we anticipating anything on that? Or was it in there? Did I miss it? Which was almost a million dollars to get, you know, to get back in line. 
Yeah, so I thought, okay, but good enough. Uh, are we, uh, uh, oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sheriff's Office, 
Um, attrition rate is basically a vacancy rate. Um, Rosin and colleagues looked at a trend. You know, how many vacancies were we carrying over a period of time? And we took a percentage of that and applied it to the base budget for this year. Um, obviously, if magically <laughs> they fill every position, you know, we would expect that, that we're going to fund it. But in reality, if, you know, you look at five years of history, they can't fund all those positions and parking a ton of money in their, um, in their budget for positions that are not filled. It's just not really great practice. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, there are some positions that are not that are not filled. There's a per department. Correct. Yeah, and and that number um, goes to their bottom line to savings. I guess that you they under budget based on them not filling those positions, so it looks good on their budget line item and all that kind of stuff. Which, which are we are we adding over the plan or we just not looking at those numbers or how we plan for those numbers? So some departments didn't fill positions because they were frozen. And so yeah. they're already filling the positions, right? So half the year the budget they were frozen, second half they filled their positions. Some of them told us we have applicants, we have made offers, you know, they're filling positions, some of the smaller departments in particular. But when we looked at the big departments, which really you saw it, 36% was really the share. Sure. Uh -huh. And then a large part of the unink, probably five. Yeah, it's probably another, yeah. probably more than 30% of the oh, yeah. unink. Oh, yeah. So when we looked at both, what we did is to apply an attrition rate to the base budget rather than budgeting for every position to be filled for 12 months. Even if they were filling all their positions, no, posi no department fills all 12, all their positions for 12 months. So we, we applied a, a, we didn't just take out, last year my understanding is they just took out a bunch of money, um, which, um, this year we were a little bit more scientific and we looked at the percentage of vacancies they had over time and we used that to, to lay against their, um, their personal line item. So when you look at the detail of the budget, you may see, for example, a personnel line item looks lower in public safety, but that, but not lower than what they're spending. Understood. Does that make sense? No, no, understood. Okay. And we're still going to help them to fill their positions and encourage and do everything we can. Um, and then the pay increase is going to help them with retention, possibly recruitment. But I just didn't think it made sense to park all that money. Um, but the good is, he's right. will be uh, an asset for the raises. Right. However, if the, if the other positions are filled, I'm hoping that the ARPA funds are ready or, you know, kind of there to kind of cause that money to be compounded for the next year because it was like 10% the first time, 5% the next year. You know, so so uh, it could be interesting because you could run out of ARPA funds on the second year just based on the mere fact of the first year that we have a good uh, hiring spree. Well, we calculated it based on um, what was in the, in the call for it. You didn't you know, did you anticipate they hiring 10 other people. We, I think we did it on, on all positions, actually. Yeah. It's actually on numbers based on all positions. On all positions? All positions. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. All vacancies. All of them. All of them. So we have a little push in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Did you well, include those who would be retired? We actually um, went and looked at the. So, my calculation was based on the vacancy rate, which is everything. Mm -hmm. Retirements, terminations, positions they haven't been able to fill. Okay. But what we did do is look at the eligible people for the sunset mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, a lot of those people are already out. Mm -hmm. They're gone. And so what we have in our current year, the sunset ends December 31st this year. Mm -hmm. What we have in our current year is well above what's needed to pay. If everybody who was eligible left, we have more money than needed to pay them to leave or to pay them out when they're there. Right. Does that make sense? It does. So then my question to you is, how many of those do you anticipate that didn't take it are, are like, right. <laughs> so I did, ask, I did ask the question in every hearing. I said, do you anticipate retirement? Okay. And you know, 
Fred and Hunter were there. We only had a handful. Yeah. Yeah. Only a handful of those that were left eligible. Now that can all change. You know, they could decide on December first to come out. But generally, there wasn't a big. You know, a lot of the people have already left. It wasn't a big ready to exit and run. Right? It was a trickle. Right. Good part is you ask the question. Good part is you trying to get ahead of it. But they're on guarantees to say what that really is. And I get it. So it's an estimate of what they said. And tomorrow, they can say, well, I'm going to mass exit because these guys are unique. Don't have to deal with it. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. All right. All right. Are we finished? Yes.
but I think we're two or three years out. And so part of our task has been to, at the same time, you have to operate, kind of maintain an eye for the future. So we were asking questions a little earlier, which you're talking about 2024, for our part with, uh, uh, county administrator about what does, you know, these recurring revenues, recurring expenses, because those are the things that happen all the time. So I just want to bring that and show you that, because that's the plan that we've kind of been operating with for, for quite a while right now. At least that's the thought process. Uh, let me just start by saying, as of today, and it's, it's an opinion, but I think I, I have supporting data, the county's in its best shape that it's been in 10 years, at least 10 years, at least definitely with respect to my involvement in our history with this board, we are in great shape. And I want to show you, we've got the county's credit rating is outstanding. You have very little or almost no debt to speak of. You, you've got, you know, planning and modeling processes in place. You've got, you've got good leadership. And, you know, obviously in 2020, this board showed a uh, very strong commitment to do some of the things that were necessary to do to kind of keep us in line. And sometimes it's very difficult. You know, we're, we, we've reached that point, and I'm going to show you a couple things here. We've reached the point where you've got your fund balance, you, you're, you're exceeding all your policy numbers right now, uh, but it's even harder to maintain. Because again, it's, it's you know once you get to a certain point, you're like man, it's really good. But now, how do I maintain that? And I think uh, Madam Superintendent kind of referenced it. My 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 box is up. It's near the rails. Kind of here's what I see. But clearly, that has to be balanced with some of the details and things you have to get done as a community. That not that I'm not focused on, but I'm trying to look far enough out and understand how they're going to impact going forward. If you recall. In 2015, we had a pretty sizable fund balance, uh, relatively speaking, and the county had experienced a significant amount of, of, of assets, a significant, significant amount of growth. But if you notice, from 16 to 2019, that fund balance had almost dropped. Almost, you know, quite depending on how you calculate it, you almost went to a point where it was below your statutory requirement of 10, you know, or mandated 10%. In 2020, you clearly see the difference. And that's because of the decisions that the board collectively made to uh, raise, not, and part of it is raising taxes, part of it is an expense control mechanism that you implemented that made, that made the difference. So it's not just one, it's a combination of tax increase and, and, and the expense reduction uh, that took place. And you also had COVID, quite frankly, COVID allowed you to operate and not under right as a new rate for a period of time. That's all reflected in the fact today that we're estimating, I think um, Ross had a little point a about $28 million in, fund, in, in unassigned fund balance. That's a big jump from when you had about $10 million in fund balance. And so you've got great fund balance. You've got a policy right now, the unassigned portion of that, uh, that's when you clearly exceeds with the, the 12 percent, it was 10 percent last year. You know, I, I'd always recommend 15 percent. I think we just didn't think we were going to get there as quickly as we had. Uh, so again, you've got great fund balance here uh, to work off of. So this chart, and I'll be really good. One of the things that I put in terms of context, if you look at 15, one of the things that I'm always talking on in terms of recurring revenue and expenses is because you really need to have a match. Basically, the county's budget reflects an operation, but there's no really, it's not a capital, it's not set up to fund capital projects. So, having said that, I want to show you that in all the years in red, you were using one time revenue sources to actually get by. And even then, you were still going into fund balance. So, these, these negative numbers actually represent the amounts that you're going into cumulatively dipping into your fund balance to make the numbers to make the numbers work better. And so one thousand is not designed for Right. And so I, I you know you wonder why I'm sort of always hard on what the rails look like in these, you know, in twenty twenty when we adopt the policies in terms of not exceeding prior revenues mm -hmm. and, and a number of 
issues. Because this is what was going on. And I'm not saying you can't say, you know, you know the, the key is for you to have context and stuff. This is what's happening. Not that you can't, you know, keep it from going back in that direction. Or if you, if the, so that you can visibly see how this occurred and then make the appropriate decision. So you want to do that for a single year or whether you want to do that for multiple years. You know, so, you know, we can have a, you know, the good thing about having fund balance or unassigned fund balance is if I'm a little short on revenue or if you're a little over on expenses, you can absorb it. But I think you need to see the pattern and have at least some context as to when we make a decision to add a recurring expense mm -hmm. that we don't have an offset in, in, in you know, uh, an offset in revenue because you only really have two sources of revenue. You don't have multiple, you don't, you don't have a revenue diversification, but you do have some balance right now. So there's some general things you're going to have to commit to. One is, am I going to commit to not holding back? Am I going to commit to raising taxes? Uh, you know, what, what, what cost factors, I mean, we just had a, a brief conversation about inflation. I am of the camp of economists that believe that inflation is not transitory. Once, once, you know, maybe gas prices will go down at some point, but generally speaking, once you give salary increases, you never get back. Right. 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 They're there, they're permanent at that And so, all of this is not to say that you shift your salary increases or recognize the things that you have to do as a community. I just want to make sure that this board all has some context as to when you move in a different direction, why you're moving in that direction. And, and a year or two later, that we can point back to, you, well, we made a decision to, to do something, and either it panned out or it didn't, and we're willing to kind of deal with that, right? So your, your policy is there, it's just a policy. It's there to, to, to kind of give you some guide rails and to be able to have this discussion and, and kind of continue our, our financial maturity. So, Commissioner Mitchell, I think you just let me mention about the fire station. If you recall, we have a new stuff model, we keep up with it. Uh, so, when does that fire station come online? <coughs> when do those, you know, what, you know, what's the operating cost to operate a fire station? That's not coming on in 23, 24. We have all of these models right now. Try to look out and say, here's if nothing happens, here's the millage that you're going to be required to, to subsidize, uh, to subsidize uh, some of those, those costs. So that's pretty much. I mean, I don't, you know. Where's the other? I've always told you, 
We're only debating about a nickel plus whatever you decide to add on top of that going forward. Right? And that's that's the one thing. The question is, what do you do with that nickel? That difference, and then what do you do with any other initiatives that you want to add or incorporate going forward? So you mentioned the question so uh, operating costs. Um, but again, it's going to grow. So the question about if you roll back or not roll if your expenses continue to grow and continue to do SDS and stuff like that. I will take that. And you can't it's counterintuitive to roll back your revenue and expenses grow. Almost that we bad, bad pride. Um, those you're going to undermine everything you're doing. And we had this conversation on um, my long-term forecasting for ACG on Monday, and uh, how I like, know you got to be careful with that. So you have to be careful with that. And uh, about line with your strategic plan. Well, if you know that you're planning these things, now you're laying up your financial forecast. So roll with that. It's not. Right? And, and don't, don't politicize an annual year. Like, what we're back to financial maturity. Like, okay, we're going to over a three year time period. And then we'll get down there and be in the third year and pretend like we didn't make that decision. And that's the maturity part. Um, so, no, this is, I appreciate you saying that. Just find some time. <laughs> no, no more. No more. So, this last chart, I'm just out of it. Again, we've got a couple of presentations. This last chart I'm going to show you. Uh, Notwithstanding, we think you're going to end 2021. The most important number for us here right now is the $28 million uh, uh, unassigned fund balance. Right? It's a really big number compared to where you work. You know, so of that, based on the calculations, I mean, I think there was maybe a, uh, a, a mistake in the prior presentation, but we can take you know 12% of that. The requirement this year is 12%. I think, you know, again, you're already exceeding the 15% of target that you always wanted you to have. Mm -hmm. Under the TAN policy, I'm going to mention this, so under the TAN policy, I would, I'm, not, I'm not totally there. I'm almost there to the extent that if you have more than 15%, my guess is you don't have to borrow. You may not have to do a TAN issue because you're, you're exceeding the 15%. So under the calculation, you're, you're allowed to put $3,348,000 into a capital fund and outlay fund for use for capital purposes outside of your normal operating budget. So even having said that, you'll still have, I mean, you'll still have a pretty good piece of change that's, that's on the summer. So this question may not be for you, but I thought about it since you're saying it. So how in, in determining our budget, Madam Sutton, how did we look at the maintenance of these departments? Like we just brought on the same services. We just brought on um, boundary boards. We, you know, got some other things that really get our attention, like really and all of those. And in the previous um, years, the administration did not maintain anything. I think me and um, um, commissioner here got an email the other day regarding. Uh, the park, the uh, Winston Park. You got an email. I got an email about Winston Park and about the um, because it's in your district where she's my mm -hmm. constituent. She emailed both of us, mm -hmm. and so we haven't maintained these buildings that we put up because the operating costs. And Director Duke talks about it all the time. It's just not enough money in there okay. to maintain. So my question is, did you guys look at that as part of the operating costs, or is that now under our capital outlay? No, so it's not under capital, um, unless it's a capital item. So a couple things. As we went through the line items in the budget, there were things that we, we added back. Because when the 8.5%, 8.25% cut was done, it, it kind of hit operating budgets. Mm -hmm. And so even though some of that was restored, was restored late in the day and it was just sort of scattered. So some of that is in the base budget. You know, some basic things, they need additional funding for cleaning, you know, additional funding for COVID type cleaning, basic things that, that they just have to have to operate and in their core and put back in the budget. Um, what we tried to do is put a lot of capital in this cost forecast because that becomes a, a way for us to 
you know, do things like repair sailing walls, sailing retention walls at parks. So they right off the bat identify two, you know, retention walls that are failing. Um, so we have, because we have that additional loss in revenue, we have been able to kind of put a little here, a little there. Um, we also have the HVAC program out of our college as one time funding, but again, it, it helps us to replace a whole bunch of HVAC units, and that's an eligible use. Um, so today and, you're getting to my point. Right? Sure, these are these are things that we should should, should be, be able um, to yeah. right. And ideally, there should be you know a fund where we put a percentage of our budget for just normal maintenance. Right, and and some may not be at the level of capital. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're when we're at that stage of maturity that David talks about, you know. In every facility, there should be a plan that says, you know, the carpet at Dog, Dog River gets replaced every 10 years. You know, things, things like that, that they may not necessarily hit capital, but just to keep us in class A condition, that should be happening. We're not there yet. You know, we can't even pay our people out of our base budget. <laughs> so we, we still have growth to do. Um, but what we did is individually, we went line item by line item every budget and there were areas where we gave departments what they told us they really needed just to keep the lights on. In some instances that was literal. We had one department that they their cut hit a line item that paid their line bill. You know, so we, we tried to fix that as we went through every every budget. So just a couple of things you know the ARPA money's coming in. Um, most municipalities are flush with a lot of cash right now. You know, from a financial perspective, we view ARPA as fund balance. It's not a revenue, right? And so it's restricted because of use, but still, it's still fund balance, right? From our from an accounting perspective, we know it's there. It's obviously has it has value to you. And you should clearly. The, the concern for us is when you create a recurring expense using one-time money, which I just showed you that was what happening. Happens when we do. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I mean, I'm just No, I get just that, but I just don't want us to get back where we have to raise the military. Right. And that is one of those things that just you know we have to yeah. I just want you to be mindful and intentional when you decide to to come, whether it's a bridge or whatever it may be. Yeah. I just want, want everyone to have context that that's the now um, Having said that, again, I'm open for any questions, but I do I don't want I want to leave with again. You've got a great credit rate, you've got great fund balance. You're, you're well on your way to that financial in terms of financial maturity. We've got a model. Uh, you've got good policy at this point that at least provide a framework and rails for which to operate under fiscally. Uh, and the county has good been quite frankly. I'm not, I'm not saying that's good or that's bad. Because there are clearly items, capital items that this county needs. And so as we begin to incorporate those capital items into this, into your budget at some point in time, they all they're not all one-time items, some of them have operating costs associated with that. And so our our sort of job is to kind of keep all of that in context, kind of put it all together, make sure that you understand how each part impacts the other part. And hopefully we've been able to communicate that a little bit today as you kind of go through the line items. Uh, the big thing from my perspective is 104.6, and maybe there's a little bit more above 104, depending on the collection rate and how that works. Because remember, you only have really two revenue sources. So, but 104.6 is the number. Our recommendation is you fit what you can fit under the 104.6, and you deal with the rest. Now you have a framework of, if I can't fit it under there, I've got to find another recovery. You know, I've got to cut something else. That's a part, you know, so it's a matter of prioritizing. But the reality of it is we're still talking about a nickel, right? You know, like less than 5% of your entire budget. Because the rest of it, unless you lay people off and do something drastic, it's not going to move Any questions? How does that come against this administration continues to galvanize our scorecard? I believe no matter the same thing. I just believe that we should be one of the 
fertility. I, I think our citizens are on board with it. They see what the cost can do. 84 projects versus one in 2012 versus this in 2016. That is a capital uh, asset that allows us to get those assets that we need. When I first took office, I looked at that budget and I knew it is not designed for capital items because it's, it's, it's a weak budget. It only has room for services and salaries. That's it. So uh, the SPLOS is our mechanism and our tool for success for this, for this county. You know, tax digestion model is not huge. Can you talk about our, the future of our tax digest with other things coming, such as other large commercial yeah. I, I, You know, quite frankly, I mean, looking at the metro area, I'm not necessarily concerned that's your digest, you won't see some growth in your digest. I mean, that's never been a concern. I mean, look, all the, all the, the, the inputs and all the amenities uh, are there for this community to continue to grow. Uh, it may not grow a clip, I mean, depending on long-term interest rates and so forth, but I think you're going to continue to see pretty strong growth uh, next two to five, let's, let's say next two to five years. Um, you are getting, to, you, you're going to see some inflation uh, if not on home prices, uh, everything's up, right? And so a combination of inflated home prices uh, and higher interest rates don't really bode well, but you'll see that reflected in your digest. So that's never been a concern for me in terms of when I looked at that. It won't be 10%, but I think it'll be a really decent number. Um, the bigger concern for me as your advisor is the actions that this board has to take, right? So. Do I raise millage rates? Do I roll back? Do I, you know, those are the things that I'm more concerned about, the control mechanism, because you may have the growth, but you may not want to capture it, right? And historically, you haven't captured the growth. You know, so, you know, it's the board's commitment. If the board's committed to maintaining or capturing that growth going forward, then, then you know, that's something that we can plan for. But right now, we, we can factor in the growth, we can assume you don't roll back. We never assume that you're going to raise taxes. We always assume that you're going to keep the millage rate the same. I think that's the safe bet in terms of when we make our assumptions. But um, the question is, does this board collectively want to maintain, maintain you know, capture the growth that may be coming to the county? Well, we do think growth is coming. As, we, as regard, with regard to your comment about the SPLOS, that is a viable mechanism for getting out the project, right? You have a series of things, and I think, uh, County Administrator mentioned, you may have 30, 40, I mean, last count, I'm not going to ask uh, uh, Director Miguel over here because his number keeps coming from 200, 300, 400 million. I'm not going to ask him because transportation projects are always things that just, those numbers are just, and they're not getting smaller, they're, they're getting bigger because of the inflation cost factors. I think the infrastructure bill will help, but at the end of the day, more of my concern is we have mechanisms to get you capital, to fund capital items. The question is, of those capital items, what is it that I'm going to have to maintain in the operating right. budget? There you go. Right. After the right. fire there stations, yeah. mm -hmm. fire stations, parks, libraries, whatever it may be. It's like you know, we can you know, it's a one time you can get it, but then we've got to maintain. Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking for that balance at the end of the day. Right? How do we maintain okay. the facilities that we did use capital dollars for that weren't necessarily in our budget because. Most citizens say, well, we paid for that. Why do we have to continue paying for it? Mm -hmm. But you do, right? There is a cost on the board. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the administrator is trying to balance what that looks like. And, and today, you do have ARPA funds. Those are great for one-time things. Mm -hmm. uh, those are great for bridges, maybe. I, I don't, you know, that's, that's the discussion I think all of you, in the context, all of you are going to have to make, you know, have a robust discussion about uh, in light of kind of where you are, what you see, but it's definitely harder to stay where you are. You know, you made a tough decision, but that doesn't end there. You're going to have to continue to, if, if, you know, my, my first rule in economics has always been, it's yours as long as you can keep it. And there's always something out there pulling you away from keeping, you know, where you are. And sometimes you have to take, I don't want to call it risk, we're not talking about risk. We're talking about how do we prioritize things. In a strategic manner, which we have been on since 2017. 
I have an operator that knows how much can you, you share the minute and solve this. But I'm, 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 I'm wanting to know the decisions that we're making, are we being, and I say this in the video, it's pretty. And so I'm going to bring it back forward. Okay, let's make sure we have room for non-zero something. That, and I said I made the number at least 20%. I put that as a vote. So now I'm going to come back to repeat and check your, your answer. Okay. What percentage of this budget of 100 represents the non-zero government? Non-general government? Yes, sure. Yeah, 53%. So, uh, so you want the dollars? On the spread, <laughs> the, the, the stuff that we normally you know, vote for there, I'm just curious as to how concentrated it would be take care of all the elected officials. That's what we're trying to get to. It would take care of it. Uh, and a comment was made that it's going to be up to us to deal with the constitutional officers mm -hmm. uh, at our last retreat, part one. And I sat there and said, okay, you just going to go throw that on the wall of us? Um, I, I, I just, and again, we got the now this is more to you. Um, as we, I, I know we got kind of mystery and have a great span of control, but you, you being the head is we're responsible for everything. Mm -hmm. Not in direct chain of command, but we, that's the whole point. Let's give the school board, a, you know, city administration. We own everything. So that mindset has to be such that it can't be, okay, I'm just worried about what I'm, I'm responsible for chain of command and forsake the rest of the county. That, that cannot be. And so I guess my question, I'm, I'm making a point. Just because I can't control it don't mean I'm not responsible for it. You, you, you have to care to understand what our role is. Who said that? So um, I, I'm back to what I'm just asking. Now, I get, I'm going to get into the numbers at some point. I'm going to later today. Which is what, what percentage did we take care of the constitutional officers? Or are we sitting up here with that, whatever that 33 million, 10, 20 million dollar worth of ass? We got to fit that within our one million dollar discretion. It's more rhetorical. Right? So what did they submit? What got in? What's remaining? So I'm hearing a lot of general government. Right? What about everybody else? Right? So they're looking at us, and unless you look into the details, it's okay, that's my whole point. We're going to get the details. Because it's not coming to the this year. Okay, wait a minute now. We have the details. Yeah, but I guess what you're asking, so when we build the base budget, um, as constitutional ask for additional items, line items, in their base budget, we certainly try to accommodate all of their requests. What I didn't accommodate is their, their proposed additions to the core, which is similar to the PIRs, because that's where I think the board has to weigh in, because those numbers were so big. I will say this, 13 million of the 30 million was salary. Salary increases. Um, of course, you haven't been able to do all of that. You know, the sheriff alone wanted 25%, so that was a huge number. Um, but as Madam Chair and I were on the, the hearings, small things that they asked for, you know, in their base budget to get reduced. So I mean, there was everything in there from copy machines to, to printers and things that just were reasonable. Um, what we did address really was any capital, you know. So there were requests for cars, and especially on the sheriff's side. That's not in the base budget. The base budget is purely operation. But we did, I mean, Madam Chair, you were there. You can probably weigh in on the meetings with the constitutional and the elected. You know, we really tried to be reasonable. And, and they, they were reasonable with us as well. We looked at some trends. Sometimes that were unspent. Sometimes they were willing to do that money to something else. Madam Chair, you Really? Yeah, I think we can actually uh, think, uh, both 
I'll just stop and share for us. He's satisfied with his increase in production. He said, uh, staffing and the salaries, which is most important. And then we need to make sure that happens. I know we started with a 25% wall and we were ready to crush it down to 10% this year and, of course, 5% next year. So I've had several conversations with him and he said he's extremely pleased. And I believe in our um, mid year retreat. Vice Chair, you did ask the question uh, when we spoke to Ken uh, Connor, who's the Chief Deputy. He said, you can't have everything. Which one do you rather have? Staff salaries or cars? And he said, at this time, he per preferred salaries. That was most important. So he did, uh, Chief Connor has sent several emails to the board acknowledging his, uh, expressing his excitement and how pleased he is about uh, what the salaries are looking at. And the morale is going up with our staff. And that's important because um, right now the cars that we ordered in March uh, of last year, or should I say April of last year, all of them are not even being yet. So we're still waiting on probably about 10 to 15 cars to come in and share the cars. Uh, the equipment, we just signed off on the equipment for the cars. The twin after they were able to get almost close to 30 cars um, this past year. But still, like I said, there's a back order, so they're still waiting on cars. So I didn't. I think that the, the preference right now is their salaries. And I haven't heard any complaints now. Uh, tax commissioner, we want another person to help with tax delinquent. We want to tax delinquent according to work with Martin. And that's something that we definitely want to look at. And as we go throughout uh, the, the portion of the budget that requires each board of commissioners to sponsor the MIA, I do have that on the list of tax commissioner, tax commissioner. And I'm quite sure it's maybe one of the two of all of you all. And I say that the commission is going to have to use as well. We were able to take care of um, our clerk, Madam Clerk. She did an adjustment of her salary. She had money already there, so she, she's been taken care of. Our probate judge, Madam Clerk, she says so she's pleased. And that's, that's it for the constitutional officers today. Then we have a clerk that's needed on the judicial side. Uh, for the Superior Court, Judge Adams made that clear in the meeting. So I have some copious notes that, uh, that we'll be talking about a little later, some things that they said that was just very important this year that had to be that they wanted to see in so many this budget. Because we know we can't have everything because 30 million is quite a bit. So we have to pick and, pick and choose and so many they give us their preference. Their problem provides the problem. No, that's that that's perfect. Uh, so I, my last point was to back and again, you know, raise the military for the rollback part. So you're going to come back to the accuracy of the diagnosis. All I said you do all this other things on the table, you talk about cash and low, I just want you to know right what we got. Okay, so I'm going to come back to uh, the non-residential side. I know we've got some things in play with our tax assessor that we brought from town in, we give them the tools, we give them the cash, uh, we use the people. Um, because, um, again, give the numbers right. You owe what you owe. When we're about business, you owe it, you got to pay it. We thought, we, again, historically, we had a really cash that we sort of let you off the hook. We, it was just a handshake. It's just what it was. Right? We have to think of a lot of stuff. It's just like, okay, it was just the way it was. Doing our possessions that they, didn't, they really didn't know. These are free. We don't want to do nothing. Like, okay. And they got to the habit, just not really. I was in those rooms. And, okay, that's when you all enjoy it. That's when you all like mm -hmm. right, But now, we're, now we've got to show evidence. So you show us your receipts. Okay, let's make sure these receipts are accurate. Right, so I think um, once we get to a place where I think in two years, again, once you, you begin to really charge the non residential side, what we should be charging it. And I've got a two, three hotel, my district is probably off by three million. Because we're doing it the old way. They come in there and they'll complain about their bill. And they look like, well, we shouldn't have been talking to this. Mm -hmm. Right? So they said, okay, no, I can't help you on this. So let's have that conversation. When you begin to correct me, don't, no, this is what you owe. Your value is your value. Don't, don't cheapen yourself by saying, okay, on one hand, you want this, and yet, you know, well, this, 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 this is the law. State law says 40% of the guy I mean, what? So it's going to hit your businesses, guys. 
But it should be, because we were going back and we were hanging along, we left the two cheap so it's all in. Now you gotta try to correct this, that balloon is, they're gonna fill it. They're going to fill it, but that's what it's always gonna do, not, not collect. I went ahead and complained about what we can't get done, oh, we're concerned about this, but yet, like, and this is what we are back to mature back, because we have to accept the reality that we're not to get it. It's of our watch. All you hear me do what I normally do is to make this work. We won't have to own this. Right? And, and not fear what needs to be done. So for the next hundred years, we've we got to put on the right track, off track. It doesn't matter how we got here. you got to get to a place where we will be, be balanced, we'll be mature. It will live on beyond. And to, to a point, you got to understand context. We're being educated. We're learning. Right? How do we understand that high performance? When we talk about high performance. Are you willing to make the decisions to allow you to get there? So I do appreciate you, David, being up here. Stuff. We always appreciate your advice and stuff, man. Uh, I have one more first question, man, Madam Chair, but again, appreciate you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any more questions? Come. I just want to add to the fact that the inflation is causing or should is escalating this responsibility. Uh, not even our ability, but I need to think outside the box. We are looking at uh, fees, uh, fee, a lot of our fee, our fee structure is over. And our county administrator will be following all that information that and so we would like to see once we look at our fee structure and then we go in and this, this county report. So I want to compare the benchmark with other counties to see what it looks like and some of those fees. Then benchmark and then see what the final impact will be on the budget. Given that added money. And of course, commercial, then I believe the Commission of Guidance said the personal property needs to be looked at as well. Uh, that's what they that's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, they look at that commercial. But that is personal. That's right. yeah. personal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So one, once we look at that and then just see if we can forecast and see what it will look like in terms of how, what the revenue will look like. If, and the concern is just speculation, but that gives us an idea what it will look like. So sure, you say you work on that for us and work with you. Yeah, I'm going to turn it around with that. Okay. And then I believe that's okay. And I believe our Commissioner uh, Mitchell will be excited about uh, not having to go out and see candidates. Cool. The, the options on the TANs are always on the table to get to that point. Uh, we've got pretty respectful fund balance at this point. In, implicitly, I, I, I'm pretty sure we adopted in the policy that if you add more than 15%, I know it's not the policy that should require me as to you have an excess of 15% uh, of uh, the unassigned fund balance based on a model for a budget, unless something goes off the rails, probably, you know, I'm almost sure you can get by without doing that. But again, it's about active management, it's about looking at things on, on a monthly basis, and somewhere in the next, once the budget is passed, we'll then have to uh, forecast what that monthly cash flow looks like. And I think, I think you'll be okay. I don't want to rule it out 100%, but I'm pretty sure at this point you won't have to use that tool this year. Uh, have we ever looked at the impact phase? Because, you know, so the developers coming in, they pay for the impact it's going to make on the community. Uh, I know uh, the Pacific County uses impact fees quite a, a lot, and they don't have to give their any abatement. That's a that that discussion needs to, probably needs to be had. Yeah. I mean, quite frankly, it just it hasn't been a part of this makeup, but it needs to be had. Mm -hmm. I like that because we can use impact fees and a percentage of the impact fees we can put to the side for maintenance of parts and things of that nature. So we can use the impact fees to help us to offset some of the areas that we're going to. Yes. Mm -hmm. I asked him else to send me her that I mean I'm sure for that too, but anyway I can so I'll make a note to look into that. Oh, okay. so it goes back to not, not to nerve any of you up out. My staff hears this stuff all the time. A lot of things about it. I always tell people there's, there are always numbers that's made pick you out between zero and one. So I say that to say that in forums like this, it's good to have this dialogue. It's good because it creates out of the box ideals about mm -hmm. maybe how this something done. You have like all these town homes that's going mm -hmm. in, and you're going to have 400 town homes, and then they won't pay pay taxes until the next year. And then, mm -hmm. but they're mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. 
So they need to impact us. If you know growth is coming, the question is how do we capture the sum of that that at least doesn't cost you money, right? You at least want to try to get something back out of that other than the, the property tax, right? And so if you're going to give up a property tax, I mean, that's a balancing game again, but it deserves to be looked at. It's a number between zero and one that we need to look at again when it's all said and done. Well, you get a free ride for about 18 months sometimes. <laughs> right. so. Yeah, I want to add to another guy this point. When I first came to office, transitioning from Charlie Kemp, we had a meeting in my office. There's one thing I should consider. And he says, in that case, he gave the book, he's still on the shelf right now, um, about um, using impact case for development. Again, he was out of real estate, you know, he didn't want to put an annex, he was the mayor and annex all of the tributary and all of Riverside into Memphis. We jumped the river so and he, he understood it. Uh, that was in the background. Uh, but what I what, what I knew, but he said the point is that well currently Tom didn't want to consider it because of impacting developers. And if they'll go somewhere else and you're trying to charge them. And at that time he was very good at customer service of the sewer authority. And even now our planning is only at that time probably wasn't the most friendly. Right, the question you have to ask yourself is that, okay, it's going to cost more. So are you going to hold the line and plan and go? Are you going to hold? They say, no, this is what it means to do business in Dallas. And for that exchange, I mean, again, I get it. It's great. I, I hear us talk a lot. Great conversation. Are you willing to hold that standard? This is now, okay, I go somewhere else, manage. Right, so back to, you know, why it's the exchange. If you need more additional conversation, but something that, to your point, there should be an offset, there should be a cost. They can be able to try to hold the line from transportation, like, okay, no, pay for this. Right? It's a trade off. Right? But if you, you again, you want to do this, want to get this deal done, don't, don't get too thirsty. For the sake of a deal, for the sake of a, a, a quick win, for the sake of being on the front page, hey, don't, don't, don't do that. Right? You're talking about policy decisions, you're talking about like, so it's policy, not just in the moment of decision. So I think you're, you're right. I think you, ladies, you are on something regarding that, not be willing to entertain that. But let's just make that a real policy. Um, and um, that will help. Uh, it will help. It will make a difference. Because commercial, it's common. There's so much liquidity out there, guys. There's a lot of money in the system. It's coming back. I mean, plans on it will be my uh, It's coming. So let's go ahead and get ahead of this. We're not so lot of it now. As well as a lot of you know, make way through all after that, right? So let's get it in place while we know it's coming. So that's all I got to do. Thank you. Thank you. Boston, I know our online sales with uh, regard to loss this year is making a difference because of the 2020, was that the uh, online site sales? Uh, typically, we were receiving 1.2 million a month on the uh, just lost, but now it's 1.7. So it tells me 500, is it 500,000 extra? No, no, this is just lost. We look at lost. Yes, um, it's been averaging out. Like 1.7? Yes. So that's totally about 500,000 extra. That's correct. Right. So we underline that out for a year to 6 million additional dollars um, possibly be receiving the board on just our lost sales. And so we did it. Yeah, no, no, we didn't get it. But I'm just yeah, saying we did. But yeah. but last year we didn't have an idea of what we would use because we didn't have any history. This year we have some history, so that six million is probably what we, we will be receiving. Yeah, and I think it's a mixture of also the COVID. Remember mm -hmm. our mixture so say maybe. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But still, it's, it's in there. Right. It's it has increased. Yes. And it is part of our um, number. Yes. And it's no way we can carve out the amount that's related to our online sales. But it's business. also a road back on property tax. Remember, it's a lot of property tax. My question to you is, and you may not be able to do this, maybe, but since we are considering bumping people up to a living wage. 
that impact on top of what what all we got here? Correct. What 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 would it take for us after the offer is gone to maintain what it like what <laughs> You tell me. So the current, so if, yeah. you mm -hmm. if you implement it, if you implement the living wage, if we implement the, the living minimum wage, um, I think Commissioner Mitchell was saying, okay, if you do that, and what do you do with the other people who are at? Yeah. That so, level? so the number is, if I recall, is million, million six. Is that what it is? Um, for the living wage, and this is at the fifteen dollars, um, it's a million, yeah. and it affects two hundred and eighty-one employees. So it looks like 0 0.20 increase in the millage rate to cover that. So it'll be a 0 0.20 millage increase in 2024. That is correct. Well, or 2023. Well, so what? Yeah. Again, I, I, again. I want you to, for just a brief minute, I want you to put our, I want you to put ARPA aside. I know the funds exist. And, and, I, and I am right. putting ARPA aside. That's why I'm having this conversation now, because if we don't have it now, we're going to get there. 2023, <laughs> we'll get here before you Right. And so all we have is next year to prepare for what we're going to actually have to pay for it in the budget. Right. So I get, you know. So that's all I mean. So from my standpoint, it's a payroll. And I'm not, I'm not making a justification whether it's good or bad. I get you. It creates an additional recurring expense right. that needs to be incorporated. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to incorporate it in your existing budget as if you didn't have the ARPA money, but that may not be realistic right. for your for your other for whatever objectives you have for your community. But it's still a recurring so expense. You say it would be a risk. And let me say this. The bigger, again, the bigger picture for me is you have a recurring expense that affects 280 people and bring them up. The question is, what about the what next poor part of your employment population? Mm -hmm. So well, wait a minute now. If they're at 16 or 15, <laughs> what's the next what's the next population? Right? And now not, you know, in terms of does it is it like bracket group? So now you set the floor. Does that make the floor move up even more for others? Or does that does that analysis need to be done for your entire population, employee mm -hmm. population? Mm -hmm. right, that's the longer term maturity question. Okay. So you're saying yes, we did look at that. What would that be? What, so, what would that be? So then it's all in in the number that's reflected for the payroll increases. Mm -hmm. So what we did is um Ross pulled a list of everybody under $15 an hour, mm -hmm. including the firefighters. Because even though they make 25, they do 2,500 hours a year, their, their base rate was still under 15. And so what we did for equity, so let's talk firefighters for a second. So they, they would be the 10% category. We did $15 or 10%, whichever was great. So um, 69 uh, firefighters make 13 50 an hour. If they got the 10%, that would be $1.30, so they would be less than 50 to still. So they got the 50. Okay. If they were non-public safety, it would have been 5%, but we went with the higher number, whichever was greater. Okay. And then to answer the question of compression, I will admit there will be some compression, but remember, this is across the board, so we didn't pick and choose categories. Mm -hmm. So if you were um, already in the fire department, you are going to get it, and you are making 15 already. You're going to get a 10 percent raise, so now you're at 16 to 50. So the spread between where you were and the person who's under you mm -hmm. maybe a smaller spread, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, everybody still goes up. Exactly. So I don't. There will be some compression, but it will be intolerable. I think when when compression becomes intolerable is when. The person underneath gets a raise and the person above doesn't get anything. But because everybody is moving, you know, that I think is going to make it so that the, the spreads will be smaller, but it won't be an intolerable situation. Right. But what about the uh, request from each department? Uh, they're wanting the employees to get uh, booked up. So they're equitable to another office. 
Right. Say, so positions. Sure. So that I mean, some of that is in your detail where they called out specific people. In my department, where where we are is we are good with the board's plan. That's our story. We're with it. We're good with the board's plan. 10% for public safety, 5% for everybody else. Mm -hmm. for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And some of those requests were consistent with a 10% or a 5%. Some of the constitutionals asked for more. As fast as that's going to be my next question. Yeah, some, I mean, the sheriff has a 25%. You know, we built in, we built in what the board agreed to. Okay. And so, well, we automatically almost know because we just get super new growth that in a few years we may have to increase the Okay. New growth and get your corrected numbers. Yeah, that's right. I did. I did. Commissioner Robbins, I was on the board of assessors. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no offense to my man right there. <laughs> so you say it's not something as much as we think. You so so you almost have to think about who's closing the shop, who's not going to be here, who's new coming in. All those things I don't think we as a board think about. We just see numbers. Mm. So I'm trying to get an overall. I'm just trying to prepare us overall. This is business. They ain't just any other way to say it. It's just so compression is compression is. Uh, County administrators that, you know, again, it's not so much that there will be, there will be a, a little bit, but maybe it's management, maybe it's not from a macro perspective. If I give it on one end, and I, it's something that we at least have to address in this case. Now, how do you handle it? it sounds as though you have a fairly good grip on how you're going to deal with that. Um, but the, the reality of it is, it never goes down. Right. It only goes up and it's later on. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. And so from a numbers perspective, you know, it's not a policy issue, it's a number. Is that number, once I give it to you, it causes a chain reaction and it never goes back. I can never take it back. Right. So, and that's okay. As long as we, accommodate, we have, make accommodations and you're managing it, uh, you're, you're, you're managing it going forward. That's all. It sounds like you have a, I mean, it sounds like there's a plan. I believe in 2020, two years time, you have a better idea. Number one, we should have higher technology and things that grab some of those things we've been missing, such as the tax assessor side, tax submission side. Also, uh, I just believe that uh, we'll have a better idea of just those opportunities that we're going to put in place, such as the fees, the commercial, and all the things that we're looking at. Hopefully it was a house. I love being optimistic. So far, it's, it's, it's got us to the point of where we are today. I just believe in optimism. Um, that's what good coaches do. They just believe in it. I just believe in it. Not, we just got to be able to do it. But uh, if you could share with us uh, one of the commissions that we used to have to say that's one of his great We're going to have to double up on the tan machine. <laughs> <laughs> because you walked out of the room. You know, one of the things that I did share that because of the fund balance that we do have, and you know, we'll, we'll get a more accurate one once, once the budget's passed, we can now we pass the cash flow. But given the policies and so forth, if you exceeded 15% of unsigned fund balance, you exceeded 15%, um, you would generally not, you thought you would not have to be a TAN this year. I mean, already, if you saw the trend, yes. we were already defined as a from, from the prior years, right? Uh, and so we think that that's going to be the case this year. Um, and again, you've got sound fund balance, you've got a good credit rating. But it's a couple of the funds, oh, like offering and everything else. So I mean, I, I get yeah. it. So we've yeah. been in this space before, the other ones, right? You know, we'll just have an opportunity to do it. Yeah, but I mean, just operationally, mm -hmm. um, you know, awesome also. Is covering some things that again that aren't in your budget. Your operation, from a market perspective, uh, Ross, I think the burn rate is maybe eight million a month. If I've got like eight, eight, eight to nine million dollars a month, 
you know, was up and down. If you look at the estimated number she had, so far I think throughout October, we brought in about 39 million in revenue, and yet 44 million or 41 million in expenses. So now, you know, obviously November and December, the tax revenue is going to flip it, right? So, you know, we're managing that. That we're managing that. Oh, yeah. well, I'm hopeful that we won't have to come back to the plan. But some of that function is what we do with this particular budget. So I'm not going to commit to it, but I commit to a budget. I'm overly excited about it. So, so but it's, it's a one time deal. It's a one moment, you know, a time that we but, but again, I'll, let me say this it's not, we have different perspectives of all the years. Whether it's that, no matter where I've been, TANs are, are viable tools. Even in our own business as a security firm, we use, we don't call it a TAN, right? Because we, we, we buy and sell securities, and there's timing differences. You've got a good fund balance, right? We use that fund balance. Uh, interest rates are at historical lows. We borrowed, I think, one year we got 0.67 million. That's a little bit here. I mean, but they're just. When I hear my vice chairman around some state, that guy. But I think during the pandemic, where we kind of we maxed out during the pandemic because we just weren't sure. Uh, and you noticed last year, we, we you know we made some, some tough decisions, and we were able to kind of cut that. We went from I think 25 million down to 12 million, right? And so that number, that that's the trend. And you had the breaks, yeah. They all have good breaks, so yeah, yeah, I get it. So, no, I get it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Can I say one thing? And it's the panel. Now that you're back in the room, because you missed you know, a very important piece, is um, there are many things that we're not doing as a government, right? Because we just don't have the money. Um, normally, you would have that asset management um, plan, and every year, you know, you do that, you know, one tenth of the useful life. You know, you're, you're setting aside money, or you're doing that renovation, and we're maintaining what you build with slots. So, so you have that. The other thing is, normally there is a plan to build in increases, whether it's just the cost of living, or you know, that's just normal business. Right. You just don't get to keep it static. That's not realistic. So, so today this was earlier, and now that you're back in the room. The temptation, because <laughs> I know you're going to get me back. <laughs> you know, the temptation to roll back, you really need to take that off the table because no matter how good the growth looks, there are many things that we are not doing. We have a gap as a government of things we are not doing. So I know this will all get forgotten next year, you know, August, when you're looking at the village rate, in July, when you're looking at the village rate. But it's really important for you to remember that there are things we're just not doing it. Quite honestly, the interim money, the ARPA, the increased cost, those are buying us time. Yes. You know, yes. you update a new piece of equipment, you buy a new AC, that's gonna reduce your operating cost. Oh. But you gotta maintain it. Yeah. You gotta maintain it. Well, but I think we've already spoken about it. I know we've already spoken about it. So you have an operating portion that is equal to blank. 
right? It has to be current to recurrent. And now you have a, a portion of your fund balance that if you need, we think the number of this is going to be considered 3.3 million. Exactly. That can be used for maintenance items, capital items, that's separate and apart from your normal operating. Right? It's just an acknowledgement that you've got to still take care of yes. other stuff that's out there. Well, I appreciate it. Any, any other questions on the, the balance of the day? I, I have one more question. I have to ask you, this is all right, so we do want to come back to the digest, we come back to the accuracy. There's nothing like the material in the first thing on the line. Um, so it was $1.2 million right off the gap time. Oh, yeah. And you go to that about $4 million for, for this. No. I'm talking relative. It makes a difference when the numbers are wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't discount the number of people as a penny, nickel, or dollar. I always say, I want to make sure I'm just going to say the numbers are right. Don't discount the need to be 100%. Don't, be, don't discount it when that auditor comes in. They're telling you that. They're down there. Okay, gosh, I know we just do this. Right. 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 So, I, I mean, I'm not playing when I say what I say. It's got to be accurate. They have to stand there. There's nothing like taking that kid. We just don't say that it's a the tough. They give us a paper in the back of the room. You shouldn't sure really say what just happened. They might have been teaching you won't say nothing. I take it serious. I take it very serious. Show me the math. Show me that you know what you're doing. But the Panthers. So, I guess as we get into this, um, I, I know we've got some lots of little plus conditions, procurement, finance, whatever. We need to address those. I've been doing a lot of stuff with consultants, and I, I appreciate Roslyn and David and everybody else who's at the table, but I, I, maybe that's one we didn't. I just didn't read it, I apologize. Uh, but you know, if you talk about broadly, we've got to address some, some whole organizations. Madam Chair? Are we going to address those at some point? Yeah, we will. We will address those, but also um, the county administrator for the finance director and the purchasing director. That's a money their salaries on the debt and the finance. Yes, all that stuff. But we will address those. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not so sure. We do about the money. If you, if we're losing time for knowledge transfer. If you're losing time for why we bring your life to your beginning. Right? If we're missing that moment, if we've got the best of game in here, but yet, who, who are we instilling it into? That's a contract. Mm -hmm. Right? So we have to go cost what it's going to cost. But you can't just dismiss it. You can't pretend like it's not that. I don't know how to work. Your, your finance is.
some of the numbers that David didn't want to ask about earlier. And unfortunately, the numbers that we deal with in transportation are big. They're just expensive projects uh, on, on average. To give you some context, our CDP update that we just about to finalize, we found that over the next 25 to 27 years, the needs in the county on the transportation side uh, it cost about $700 million. Right? Those are the kind of numbers that we're looking at. Now, obviously, it's over a long period of time, but transportation projects are things that you have to plan for and position um, the system to be able to deliver. One of the things that uh, we always try to do with, in transportation is leverage the local funding. And so what I want to talk about today is something that we discussed at the Transportation Committee meeting, and it is an opportunity for the county to actually leverage local funds. There are uh, TIP projects. We have four that are at the forefront right now. They overall will cost about a little over $100 million. Now this is $100 million out of the $700 million overall CTP estimate. So these are included on there. When we did, well, when we all did the, the SPOS forecast and approved some funding for some projects, those were primarily SPOS projects, but we did approve some funds for TIP projects for PE. Actually, out of the four, three of the ones in green. There is another project that we have underway that we just, there wasn't enough funding to be able to even attempt to fund the PE. Now, that project is under design. However, the initial estimate was, back in 2010, was about $12 million. The new estimate is about $40 million. So the prices escalate as you get more and more into the detail of the project and the things that come up along the way. Environmental factors, because we're using federal funds, is a big component of that cost increase. So in any event, we have an opportunity now. There is a call for project at the Atlanta Regional Commission. Now, the call for project happens on average every two years. So we have one, or they have one in 2019. Now they opened one at the end of 2021. With, they're labeling it 2022. The expectation is that there will be another one opening up in 2024. The projects that we have here are on target. They all have begun the PE phase, some of them with uh, studies, feasibility analysis. The others are in actual design. There's three, uh, Chattahoochee Hills Greenway Trail is in actual design it's beyond the concept report. Uh, the Leaf Road White Widen Project Phase 1 from 78 U.S. 78 to like 20. We're just about to go into the design there. The estimate for that project back in probably 2005, in that time frame, uh, was about $13 million, as I recall. That is a very outdated estimate, but it is the, the starting point for us now. So we're trying to get Essentially, we're trying to position these projects to be able to compete for federal dollars. However, one thing to keep in mind is that the most you can get funding on any phase of the uh, process is 80%. And frankly, 80% is not achievable most of the time. So, you, uh, so you're looking at something less than that over time, but when we go in for an application, we ask for 80% of the cost. 
But in reality, <clears throat> when you think about, well, this is the cost we estimate now, two years from now, three years from now, <clears throat> the cost will go up. So it ends up being not quite 80% of the overall. But nonetheless, how do you, how do you address a $700 million need with local dollars? And one of the avenues, avenues is you leverage as much as you can. This is an opportunity to leverage, but you will have to commit to the local match, which is a minimum of 20%. So of these projects, the, the call for projects is from 2023, fiscal year 2023 to 2025. These projects, as I mentioned, cost overall a little over 100 million, but they will not be ready to go to construction by 2025. It, it's, it just so happens that in the process, uh, the one, there's only one project that will be ready for construction in 2025, but the others are on track to go to construction in 2026, just outside of this window. So there is an opportunity for us, for the county, to go after federal funding for the phases that fall within that window from 23 to 25. And but that is, on all of the projects, it would be the right of way phase. And then on the Chapel Hill I-20 interchange would be also the construction phase. Now, you may recall the infrastructure bill that was just passed and signed by, by the uh, President initially listed a number of projects, um, and some of which came through the board. And we had a, a letter of support that was sent uh, to uh, uh, senators and uh, representatives to be able to move that process forward. As the bill progressed, those specific earmarks were dropped in favor of a lump sum for that category of product. It doesn't, so uh, we, we put in for, on the Chapel Hill uh, I-20 project, for example, we asked for $5 million. And it made its way through a lot of the iterations of that bill. But before it got finalized in Congress, they dropped all of the specific earmarks and said, OK, we're going to take the sum total of these projects was, I don't know that it wasn't 100% of it, but a lump sum of money that is going to go for these projects. And then they left the details on how they're going to disperse that funding, at what level, is it the Atlanta Regional Commission, is it, is it GDOT? That is to be determined. My expectation, based on history, is that they will rely on both of those, GDOT and the ARC, to do the final disbursement because that's the way the process is set up. I, I don't think they're going to come up with something vastly different. But that, that said, this opportunity is really within the overall ask that the board approved last, earlier this year. So these are not different projects, and it's, and it's not additional funding. This is actually a piece of that overall. The, the opportunities so what are the chances, though? What are the, I'm sorry, what are the chances? chances? Based on what you just said, you've done the most of the projects at the federal level. They now spelled out what it is. Now they, they approved it, but they have a lump sum of money, mm -hmm. not private. Correct. The ARC and others. Yes. ARC and that. So I'm assuming you're saying to us, for the life of the chair, we serve on that board of ARC. We mm -hmm. need to be able to keep our eye and ears to the ground so when that, when, the, when that pot of money comes through, to make sure our projects in the forefront are uh, ready to go versus not having this conversation again until we wait to see what ARC or the GDI or the member. But if it's GDI level, you will be over there somewhere saying, hey, we're ready to go. You know, we got the scope, we got everything done, and so we're ready to kind of move on the project. Mm -hmm. We just need the funding source. 
Now, whether it will be 80%, 90%, or 100%, that will cross that bridge at that point in time. Yeah. Am, I, am I assuming that? Yeah, you're correct. Right. Absolutely. The, the, the window of time, the window of time to place these projects in the running is by the end of this month, we have to have an application into the ARC. That's a big deal. We, we do that all day long. So mechanically or procedurally, we're twice to do that. What I need from you, from the board, is a letter of support. Obviously not today, but that will come before the board for approval. A letter, a letter of actually a resolution of support for these projects, which is, is going to be very similar to the one you approved. That, that was in letter form. This is more form a resolution. That is a requirement. But we'll get the application in for this call for projects with these projects if that is the rule of the board. But keep in mind that you have to then, in that resolution, you're committing to the match. Why do you have to tell me my next portion? And so the match. For all of the assets in that window of opportunity is $4.3 million. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm okay. So, so, okay. No, so, so, so I get it. So, I think we're, we're thinking along the same lines. So, are you prepared to, to, to say to us, these are the projects, I'm assuming in this type of order, and if it comes down the pipeline, we're willing to match your numbers 4.2 meaning ready to go and move on the project. That is correct. So, you also have the, the opportunity to change the priority. It yes. Be in this sequence, or a different sequence. Now, I have, if you ask me the question, right, you ask me what do you, which projects are better positioned to get federal funds out I didn't tell you that. I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, there are two projects that are key candidates based on the criteria, and that is the Chapel Hill Interchange, because it is a compact project and the overall cost is not that high. And the Lee Road Phase 1, which is the project that we are just right. advertising for design. Right. It's a long-standing project, and it has a very good chance of right. being one of the ones in the front. Now, the other two have a good chance as well, but of the four, I would say those two rise to the top based on the criteria. Now, if I would say if you are, if you are able to commit to the 4.3 million, you put them all in, and we may get, so we would be, you know, the total need is 21.5 million. We're, we would be asking for 17.2 million in federal funds, mm -hmm. and we would have to match a 4.3 million of local funds. Mm -hmm. We may get 17.2 in federal, but we may get 10. Okay. So this is the, you will, we will not get any more than we ask for, Understood. but it could be something less. But would it be making sense? Put the projects in that in, 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 in some form of order of preference. And that would be kind of least so they go off the first two. We will want to do it in a good line. However, I think it should submit all four, make a request for all four, and be prepared to do it a 4.3 and match if that be the case. But if not, we need one of the four, or two of the four, or all of the four. Yes. At least an absence of, of what the order that we would see as a county and how we like to move in this particular project. Okay. If we get all four, if we can't get to the 4.3, if you your numbers, and then we can also buy all the buy all the mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now you're on the right track. Okay. Uh, so so you, you can discuss, <clears throat> let me know what your priority is. Right. Um, again, I, I, I beg the question from you uh, because I have a sense of a couple of them rising to the top. So, but you tell me which ones we will, we will rank them one to four. And they may get to one, two, and three, but not four. Or they may get to one, two, or four. Okay, so uh, the one project that we have. Sir, is there a question? No. Okay. Um, 
The one project that we have under design, the Cannon Hill Trail project, we do have a budget for preliminary engineering. That's what PE is. However, because of the difference in the original estimate to the actual current estimate on a project, the fee for design has gone up. And, and we are at a point where we really need to find additional funding to be able to continue with the design. Or we're going to have to take a look at perhaps uh, doing only a portion of the project. Now this is a graphic to give you a sense. When we started the design, it's 11 miles, and it was, it's to go from Boundary Waters to Sweetwater Creek State Park. Coming along uh, the Chattahoochee as, as close as we can get without impacting environmental sensitive areas. And then at some point, it kind of follows Riverside Park because Getting closer to the river is just not feasible due to the sensitivity of the air. And then it follows the road to Rockhouse Road and it comes up along Rockhouse Road to the park. Now, we segmented, even though the, uh, the initial design effort was going to be all one project, as the cost began to become more clear and it began to escalate, we looked at this as a one design, but an implementation in phases. Mm -hmm. So we, had, we segmented it, and you can see the different colors. Phase one is the red, phase two is the yellow, <coughs> phase three is the blue, cyan, and the other stuff. So, um, so that's how we were kind of positioning this project. Because of the funding limitation, if we cannot come up with the additional money for PE, then we would look at, instead of continuing to design the entire length, we would focus on one of the lengths, one of the segments, one of the faces. Mm -hmm. And we've had some preliminary discussions with uh, the DDOC, their environmental folk. And in discussions for several meetings, they indicated, well, you have to have what is the, the term that we use is logical termini, meaning it, it needs to make sense where you start where you point up at. And so phase three became the one that, that jumped out as the most logical from the standpoint that it connects to what would be a trailhead at the park within park property and connecting to the uh, bike lanes that exist along the riverside. So from, from the GDOT standpoint, they think that they would be okay with that. Now we have not had discussions with the ARC on this or what have you, but just strategizing how do we move the project forward, how do we move a piece of part of it forward, that's where we are with that. The expectation, uh, again, is that if we can come up with another $3 million for CE, we will continue the overall design and then just worry about delivery uh, or implementation in phases. And essentially, this, this is the ask. There would be, um, again, the need to prioritize the project, not before, and we would be asking for 17, 17.2 million in federal funds and we would have to come up with 43. So with that, mm -hmm. stop talking and <laughs> let you ask questions. Uh, when, uh,
the application for the funding that you understand that there would be a need for the commitment? I will file the applications with the ARC based on your feedback. Then I will be bringing before you a formal resolution for approval at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Just for time to say that I thought no, because the timing was we had a special call. And we were going to come straight ahead and talk to you guys. But the timeline is. By the end of the month, I'm going to submit the application. Let me understand something. The 4.3 million dollars, right? It's cited to that's the loan or that, that's the application? That's the high end of the maximum Mostly between 20, fiscal 23 through 25. Right. Now, you, the board has to make the commitment, but the actual expenditure does not hit on the fiscal 23. So much of work there is contingent out of the year. Potentially between fiscal 2023 and 2025. And you would ask for that in your operating budget, or you ask it as a capital item? It would be a, a capital item usually. We, we seldom have this kind of funding in, in my operating budget. <laughs> <laughs> To do with Sharon, <laughs> but you won't see, you won't need, or even get access to these possible funds until Feds or ARC or somebody sign off. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, yeah. 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 No, I get that. Just want to make sure it works uh, because there's, you know, you're signing up for something today, right? Yeah. Okay. And you're projecting. And again, not saying that there's another way to do it, but in, in addition to that, that number <coughs> will not end. It's correct. I'm sorry? That number you're telling me, that number won't be bigger than that? I, I'm hopeful it could be bigger because if we won't, <laughs> let me qualify the answer. Let me qualify the answer. This is based on things as we know today. The infrastructure bill has a lot more funding that is going to be part of another phase. So for purposes of today's discussion, that number is the max. However, there, there's another wave coming of federal funding that would, these projects would be qualified for, would be in line for, that could potentially then trigger us asking for funding in 2026, which is the construction phase. Keep it in mind that even though the, this call for projects is from 23 to 25, the federal funding doesn't have that limitation. So when that hits, the infrastructure bill funding, when that hits, it may be <coughs> active projects for the life of the project, however, whatever the mechanics of that are. But if that's the case, that we would be having a different discussion or a follow-up discussion, not about this. These numbers are not likely to change about what else we can do with them. And my question is, I guess uh, the point of that, you know, is there, is there a map of doing it and creating some contingent liability that we're going to need to always be in a, uh, an earmark for? That, in other words, you have so much unassigned fund balance, but again, that's not really, that's not really going to be You know, it may not be used until 23 or 24, but do we need to restrict a portion of that? I'm not saying all of it, but the suggestion is that if you take 10% of that number, 24 half, to restrict it because it's now, you know you're going to use it because you're committed to it. To work toward it, trying to get it. You know, the budget, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. The kind of plan for it versus just wait and see. In 2025, we're like, oh, we need 4.2 now. Mm -hmm. Like, what the, yeah. But in the uh, new infrastructure bill, the big grants, for us, is what you're saying, I'll tell you. And so, we might, and I don't know if all the specifications come out about it, probably next year. Mm -hmm. um, if so, 
would be in a position. I mean, we'd have the fund out of the earmark, okay. But we would uh, also be seeking the other financing, right? Yeah, absolutely. For the same, I mean, for the same projects. For the same projects. Absolutely. So, and if it's, uh, the money's going to come down to the counties like all the other funds have done, we would know right away that we could fund some of these others through the new IT, I mean the new uh, infrastructure. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the mechanics of how that plays out is to be defined as you indicated. If it follows the typical Atlanta Regional Commission protocol, then it would be another call for projects, maybe a special call for projects, like a special call meeting. And, and whether they restrict it to the fiscal years that they typically do, or because of the funding source, they open it up for more years. My guess, again, I, I, I don't know, but if I, if I were going to guess, I would say they would push it beyond this because they are already considering funding levels for those years with the existing bottom line. And the additional, they may augment some of that, but they would potentially push it into 2026. And for these projects, all I need is one more year. If this would have gone out to 2026, we would have been looking at $100 million asked. But because, because the phases on those projects as they move from design to right of way acquisition to construction, they have to fall within the years that they're making the call for projects. Because they look at the project schedule and say, well, you're asking for construction funds, but your construction is outside of this window, so we're not going to give you that. But you did say, I think, that this new bill that's coming down, the funds coming down, there may not be a match. I heard that. I didn't say that, but I heard that. <laughs> I thought you said something that, that no, it may not be that big of a match. What I said, <laughs> I, I think, what I said was that, that the constraint in the years may not be there. They may open it up. But whether it's at 80% or 100%, uh, that is still to be defined. But I've heard that uh, discussion that perhaps the new funding would not have the 20% local management. Well, Roslyn, yesterday we had a finance committee and the capital fund balance was different from what you showed today. You showed three million something today and yesterday I thought it was almost twice the thing. I think you showed the differences. Yeah. Um, the reserve. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Only 25% is what yeah, I'm so it's, it's 25% of <laughs> What's left over after 15? Uh -huh. so it's not 25% of fund balance. Yeah. It's a little bit different. But I thought you had a $6 million figure in there yesterday. I didn't see that. This year, and today it's three something. I don't have any notes. I don't have any notes. Okay, don't hold me. It's not a pickle on you, Miguel. Again, when you 
start talking about, and I think the administrator mentioned this, was because you own, uh, own assets and we have operating entities, you know, we're trying to establish some bucket for capital outlay uh, out of your cover of the normal items. Mm -hmm. And then you still have an extraordinary, not an extraordinary piece, you still have a significant number, if I recall, of, of items, whether it's uh, pumping down, whether it's transportation, whether it's that whole CIP above and beyond just I need a new HVAC system, right? So how do you use the excess fund balance and capital outlay? I think it was originally designed for either one time item. It's not going to, it's not going to fund the other product. It's just not enough there to do it because of how it's formulated. But, you know, it's again, it's part of that discussion where I call it the capital stack, which is here's your normal stuff. We have to replace carpet. Here's the things that we see coming down the pipe. Here's transportation. Here's uh, other capital facilities that you need and have to be put in the context of particularly when I'm hearing it, you know, we're going to commit something today, we're going to get something, we're going to stop construction 26, and I'm expecting for that construction cost more because I don't know. And, and, and once we were kind of started it, we can't like pull out. Right? So it's just, I'm, you know, my sense is that, you know, we're not, I mean, it's planned, but we've got to at least reserve something. But the bike in 26 is not as big. If I, if I could make a couple of comments. On the, on the transportation side, there's two elements that are different than most of the problems. One, in this case, your expenditure is to leverage at a 4 to 1 ratio. So that's on the plus side. Uh, also, you have direct competition with all the other neighboring counties. And what happens, as you know, if, if they make improvements to their infrastructure and you don't do it to yours, you put yourself at a competitive disadvantage. And the longer you do that, the more obvious it becomes. Uh, in fact, well, I'll leave it there. But I would make like that same argument, not just for transportation infrastructure, but countywide facilities as well, right? I mean, at some point, people they're going to pay taxes expect, you know, parks that work, equipment that works, fire you know, apparatus, whatever. So it's not just in transportation. It's why would I go to this community versus this community on a residential and perhaps a business side as well, right? So it's not competing. It's not competing. It just it has to be in balance. Right, and, and, and I can see that point that, that's very similar. The, the plus for this is the level. You don't have that yeah. the other part. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, again, I, I'm hoping you can't be stuck on the theory. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I Yes, hopefully, you know, I have to be have to have Um, Madam Chair, I'm going to go back to the conversation because it's brief. Um, Madam Carthen will come on board, but we hosted GDOT. Mm -hmm. Very first time we ever we stepped up. We I mean, all of them here, right? Um, over the conference And um, one of the things that we leveraged uh, one of the we made, Commissioner, uh, was that uh, we're not broke. If we want we got money, we we we, we want to leverage our capital stack and said we really appreciate that because really this is why we totally got money. It was the attitude. It was knowing who you are and know what you got. It's great we, 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 I get it. I get we got multiple priorities. But it's like, okay guys, I got two weeks. We got them. I didn't the recommendation, okay, I want to use your hand. Going to do. We give him authority to move forward to at least apply. We talked about hiring a grant writer. We want to apply all these grants. Well, they all come with some type of commitment. Is it just more helpful? It is what it is, but this, I guess, when you guys weigh in, I'm not 
term, keep you in time. Are you going to allow him to move forward? There's two, uh, two. got a plot. There's no guarantee, but yes, you need to sign something. That's what's still got a source. Um, now, the question is, uh, assigning it does not commit. What if you get some spots and it has by the time you pay the money? You can always change that. You can always can move our list around based on what comes available. Right. You have decisions today because of the debt. You only do this every two years. So, he needs his more marching orders. So, what are they? That cloud. Yes. That, that's the question. That's the yes. So, recognize that you can pull the slammer. That's it. It's about 4 point, whatever it was, 4.3. So, today, can you give us a, a relative? Okay, so 4.3, we're not going to sign the whole 4.3, what percent? 25%? Give us a number. It just helps us move along with it. To build. Sure. Yeah, just to build on that, 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 that 4.3 number. Two levels. Four levels at the top. Hey, Commissioner. If you decide to take the body of the in the order, which is first at 4.3 and start at the you mentioned earlier, set aside, I'm just going to come back to the number of 10 as a 10%. And we, and we build upon that, but we give him the margin words to say, this is the priority, one, two, three, four. We know the goal is to try to bite the entire apple at 4.3 as our, if by chance the match is zero, then we still win again. So, but, but at least start taking some funds to set aside to get to this particular point. And we may get to this point of we can only buy the apple at the first or the second project because we just don't have the funding to, to make it work. So I'm just only, you know. Yeah, I, again, I mean, the easiest way is to amortize it, right? And just say, okay, I'm going to take it over four years. Um, not out of capital, you just take it out of the capital out, right? It just you yeah. got excess of it, again. Yeah. This is what three point, we're suggesting to take three point four million dollars out of the yeah. fund balance earmark and just mm -hmm. spread. You earmark that within that that fund yeah. balance. Not all of it, but right, right. But that, what, what are that percentage is, so we can kind of move on. I think. Yeah. I think by sharing around to myself and saying, "This, what are we doing? What's next? What we, what we can be able to kind of move on, so we can not move on. Yeah. We, we hang around here a little bit too long. That's not even your thought." Million per year. Okay. Um, so about, about a million a year setting aside to try to get here if we end up. Right, did you hear that? I got it down. Yeah, just put in that 3.4. That was just rough. Okay. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, it's like this. Rough. Rough. We, we got you. We got you. Yeah. I got to say it's 4 million. Yeah. Yeah, to, to get us our four point three, I have about one point one a year. So right. the beauty of, of all of this is optimism. You want the product. I, I haven't heard anyone say that. Yeah. Yeah. You've got today, you have unassigned fund maps. Now you even with the restrictions, you, if you made us think it all today, um, you could all I'm suggesting is yeah. we know this stuff not today. It's right. Perspective, right? So all we're going to do is earmarking a portion of the capital out there. Mm -hmm. And prioritizing what you said. Right. This is this prioritize the list of the better possibility at one, two, three, four, versus the one you got there. I'm not saying that people get that list at the end. What are the what are the possible greater possibilities of what the venture mm -hmm. Chapel Hill would be one. Jericho. Lee Road Phase 1 would be two. And oh. then after that, Lee Road Extension and the Greenway Trail would be four. Even though we've got a lot going on with Lee Road Extension, that would be prioritized. That would be prioritized at that What I'm suggesting is that <laughs> because of the funding sources that go into this other two projects, I gave you one or two already. Like yes. Set. We're talking about three and four? Right. They come from different funding sources. Okay. And there is a lot more money in the pot for the Lee Road extension okay. than there is for the trail. Okay. It's much more restrictive. I got that easy. Yes, I, I got you. And, and I'm good with that. So, so it's for everybody to kind of hear. So we, we kind of, that's the order. 
So we got the possible funding uh, mechanism in place. So Roswell is fully aware of that. This one is great. This one is Yes. This one is That takeaway for is that you said in times past. Correct. This is This is all. This is all. This is by itself. So with that, that is that request is okay. So break for the resolution, and, and I think these guys are ready. We all ready to sign. Are y'all in agreement and consensus? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Patrick, come in. Is there another question? So, uh, so we wrap this up. Is there anything else that you would have to show us first? No, no. This was it. This is it. That is it. It's okay. Yeah. I, I didn't want to get into the whole 700 million for stuff. No. So, I so, that was, so my question does become that green wage trailer. Does that something we can look at for T slots? Uh, I'll okay. all of these projects. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, including um, the other trails? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please go still Because I think, Matt, yeah. Susan, you did the, like, what that would look like for us. Did you, did you do that? Did you look at the trails to make sure it might not have been good? Well, I'm working on it, and Ed is using the GIS. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. so, well, not just Bear Creek, but all of it, like the connection. Right. Yeah, we're trying to put it all together. Right. right. And okay. then cost. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want to know about this, and Gail brought this to the committee, we've been working on this a long time. Uh, this trail system from the um, bulkhead at the uh, trailhead at Donald Morris, and what's 1.5 miles down the road? Not a mile. Mm -hmm. I mean, one mile. Um, we talked about the city of Cap Ferry and Fox Hall, right? I think we go from Fox Hall, Don Woods, Street Wars State Park. That's about 26 miles. Um, we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, this right here, we look at it. We've already got money encumbered, already spent on this. Prior to everybody else coming online and saying, hey, you want to go do this? This has been very important. Love to get kept money to the environmental. We have to keep changing designs. So it's one of those where from this, uh, I'm put on my district too heavy. Okay, we we get this done. It keeps shifting. So let me out here, like, well, sometimes you, you, you have to, but it's very good. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm acquiescing. I'm, I'm very wide open to what, what's happening. Right, it's not a whole thing. Okay. Like, wow, we're trying to get this done. We keep shifting. You know, out, getting more expensive and stuff, but now you're going down the rock house and you're going all that stuff. Like, okay, wow. Like, well, you're good. You can't get all the love to the extent that you lose reasoning. Right? Sometimes things fall out of the season. It falls out and it misses its window. Right? Because they do things in the line. They never fall like, that. Okay, so now, you know, so that's what's got to see. You guys know. I think that's important to acknowledge that don't start on the list of what the line funding. Some of them think we've done enough. We have to be accountable for the money we spend. We have to have discussions about the fact that no one's spending something that we've already spent tax their dollars on. Why couldn't we fulfill this? Should we keep going? That's why it's a collective decision. And it's for the scope. So that's why I bought it for this meeting. So, Again, give him his marching orders, guys.
what is it? One million. One four a million seventy four and twenty five. Okay. And so that's being set aside from the capital of three point three four eight to ten. Um, so I guess the um, I'm not sure how we do it here. Do you go around the room and kind of sorry? And each of you give me what you you know you have on your list, your your tab, and then we kind of add that up. Yes, we do that, but uh, it's possible if you can uh, Excel screen. Do you, you want it on the screen? So she can get it. Okay, do you want it on the screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Inconsistency. 
And there's, there's, there's confusion about what the role and authority are that play in when duly elected with offices. We're being consistent because each one of them has one person that supports us. Right? We're not talking about what you have command in the organization, which is a broad. We're talking about the White House, that they're full. One person, so it should be about the same. Right? So we talk about expenses. We talk about all those things. We line up our travel, our education. Same line up with anybody else. So that's just mine. I don't want to belabor this. This is not hard. This is the county. This is the county. Same structure as everybody else. The dollar amount, we not car, I'll pick a number. You want 100000 50000 I, I, I say 100 is an easy number, but we'll stay there. All three, district commissioners, county administrator, chair. That's separate, and um, you, you guys have the authority to take the general fund and move stuff around and make stuff like, no. Mm -hmm. But bring me to my second point. Uh, again, I need mean, the county attorney to help clarify this about my like, okay. Again, I gotta keep moving. Okay. Stay here. Look, I'm not home, all right, we're good. Y'all got this film, right? Look, you say, um, it's important that we understand our role. It's concerned about, um, you know, it's always about reporting and how things are being spent. Right, and it's sort of like a, a, a misdirect about folks here on Uber and travel, like, okay, look at this thing. And unless it lines up with what we've already approved on the budget, it should not be spent. Right, where's the authority for that? Let's get some clarity. Okay, we're just, just all part of the cleanup process. I just figured we'd have this conversation. First, put this in legislation, but we need to have an active conversation about what this is. Be consistent. Everybody in the ring. Everybody does what they have to do. So I, I want to keep going because everybody's got to talk. So I'm not trying to design this. You guys have to implement what we put out there. I'm trying to set policy. I'm putting forth a set of words. Move forward. Put this on my tab. Y'all got time to work this out. All right, you got that? So I'm going to move on. Um, you need to get um, more clarity. Come see me out. Second, um, I'm sponsoring uh, um, Mastery Judge and the solicitor. Just put those on my tab as far as what I was looking for to support their efforts. So those are my two. That's it. Those three things I want to address. Um, and I need more than this. Come back. Okay, thank you. That's easier said than done. Also, on the uh, chairman's budget and the board of commissioners budget, I just just look at trends for mine. We have to have to make sure that it's integrity and I don't know about the capital and things of that sort. But we need to determine what's a good budget so I can have something that I can. Certainly, so yeah, I don't want to have to explain the variances because I have I have any, any history. So we need to. Um, uh, and also, county administrator budget review as well, so we need to look at that. So we need to do some homework, but we'll do that uh, by sharing. Uh, I have a couple that I want to bring for. Thank you, Vice Chair, for taking that report. I had her uh, on my list, which is Judge uh, Cogwell. Is that when you say magistrate? Is that who you are? Mm -hmm. I, I, I have Judge Cogwell, and I would like to sponsor her. That was a request from uh, Judge
that I've identified as status. Send in uh, directors email form. Can we do that in the second Yeah, we can do that. But just, just for a meeting of the consent. And uh, the Douglas County Museum wanted $75,000 for the museum. CAC wanted $50,000.
total of the contract. So we did pay up to um, the nine months, and now we're doing monthly. So we call them up when the um, board approved it, and then um, each month we pay and make the payments. Yeah, was 12, because the contract was a total of 110 for 12 months. So are you saying 50 total, Madam Chair? I mean, also it came from on the unnamed fund. It didn't come from general funds. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Is it, is it 50 on top of the contract? Right. That's what I'm already have. Or are you just talking about your I'm spreading that 50 because that one was the 2021 and this 50 is the 2022. Okay. That's what what happened. That's what that's why I produced it because we had quite a bit in 2021. So I just said 50,000 versus another 110. I don't know. Let them to uh, come to work for the 110. They still have to provide it for us. But this one is still the worst. This is just hotel, hotel tax system. Right. So no, this, is, this, is, this is not a real because the hotel, hotel tax system. You were able to utilize it because of the CTP now. Is that what you should say? I said, but well, where do we stand? Just because you are you know, appropriate for the way it is, remove the need for this one, to get the future funding. There's two certain things. I want to make sure I'm saying what I'm listening to. And this is why I want to have details. So we go in and just look at designs and for the future 
looking for the squad in 2023. So I want that person to start looking at what we can do to transform that retirement standard. That's it. 30 dollars 25 We'll talk, and we'll talk, we'll discuss the local disparities and salaries for the Dr. Fowler's Veterans Jam executive session. Mr. Carpenter? For Medicare, we just back on the last $25,000 to save, which was $25,000 to save in New Zealand, and that's been $25,000 to save in future needs in the county space. So
guess I need to find out. Um, $71,000 is a, a big increase. Hey? Because the inmates have not been able to help us because of 
the pandemic and I'm just not sure if we're not going to help us move it to 2021. So can you, so do we have money based on the budget? Yes, yeah, both of them are going to have money. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay. And then I believe the board from the chamber, chamber presented uh, last year they were talking about those small, the small business initiatives, what they want to do to elevate uh, incubators and co-working spaces. I heard uh, Sarah Ray mention 50,000. I, you know, I asked her to ask, she said around 50,000. I'm not sure if there's something you want to put on the tab on this. I think so. And I met with her yesterday and her new um, right to the chamber of lunch and I got some um, they asked $200 to me. Ooh, $200? And what the movie we just missed the numbers. And I just like, so, all right, so put, put down um, the chamber. Hey, go back to hotel, motel tax. Give us, I, I need that to do my general fund. And I know it's not part of the unink, but the source and how it sources through is from over there. Can you guys put, um, it's a range between $50,000 and $200,000 per chamber. Just put it. What was that? <laughs> so, what do you think that I need for me? You know, you said I need to find the three hundred and twenty-six thousand total. Yeah. Um, museum CAC Vision Twenty One Museum Consultant has up to one hundred fifty-nine thousand, and you have three thirty-four eight hundred. So, fifteen two hundred pick, put a hundred. A hundred thousand. I'm just making this up. Yeah. Are you doing good? You're doing well. I think that's it. I think I found it. Oh, one other thing. The Bellas Authority wanted an increase of 25000 That was something you mentioned. And I was just trying to remember all the apps. And that was it. Okay. And I'm done. They wanted to increase it for now.
What about 75? Wait, hey. Oh, that's the baby. I already said that. Andrew, 75. Is that all? I have some doubt with it. I'm not saying all these numbers. Obviously, they all aggregate up to some number. Have, have, have you dealt with the living wage issue and have you dealt with the bigger picture payment issue? That's part of the fiscal budget, right? Did you say you can absorb that? Let you go to set aside the IRS? That's the point, you're Y'all not there yet. You gotta, you gotta back this all again, everything from the day, not just this part. But what we just said, and that's what we're saying, you can't wait to the public hearing to say that the budget's done. And that's, it's a work in progress, so it's one of those like, you gotta take everything we said away and come back at our, you know, we just gotta come back. Even Chris Mitchell ain't waiting. He doesn't have to right now. He's listening, he's trying to get a feel for the room. So actually, you can't commit right now. So just take all you can, add it up, and it's a process. It's true. And we sit back on us at the end and say, yes. That's a number number. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're not there yet. Can I get one? Can I get one? Yeah. Commissioner yeah. yeah. Carmen, procurement um, request for the salary adjustment to the director. Animal control, their request was 19.72. Planning and zoning, um, comprehensive plan, 75,000. And then Commissioner Geider was a juvenile.
the animal control crime, 19472 for a total of 3 million. So right now your target in the general fund was a million seventy people or so. You're about a hundred thousand dollars, um, a million fifty four four thirty nine. So you're about a hundred ten thousand dollars off. But we will send this out on email immediately, so you will be able to take a look at it. Um, and as I said, that includes the one fourth of the um, the tip plan that's in the capital bucket. Okay. So you're ready to close. Okay. Thank you. With all the input we gave. Yes, sir. Okay. Maybe. All right. Well, thank you, Board of Commissioners, for coming in today. And no, I mean, I'm not even a child. Thank you so much, our family team, and all our appointments and elected officials that if you can count. I think we have another elected official here, other than our Board of Commissioners. But thank you all so much for the time and talent today. And with that being said, this meeting is adjourned. So thank you.